All right. Woo. What a song. What a song. And I have a story to tell all of you on why that song was chosen for What's Your Question number 73. Welcome out, all of you amazing decoders around the world, wherever you may be, male and female. Appreciate each and every one of you for joining in. So why that song? And I, it was a cover song, amazing song, uh, cover song, and it was by um, the band uh, Blacktop Mojo. So big shout out to them. I wanted to, you know, like it wasn't copyrighted. So I thought they did an amazing job on that song. And you know how I got to choose that song or that song chose me. I'm sitting here putting this together, putting this theater together. And I have my little Alexa Amazon 
round thing over on the table over there. And I, I had said to, I, I asked it, play a song, a popular song from 1973. Of course, this is the year I was born, right? And that was the song chosen, Aerosmith, Dream On. And ladies and gentlemen, the damn song came out on January 5th. And the card of illumination tied to that, the nine of spades, which is the card for today's, what's your question? February 3rd is the nine of spades card. How about that? How the hell did AI know to spit that out? Like, I am not talking out loud. It, folks, it runs it all, man. It's, and that's why it's so beautiful. So again, I'm wearing the sunglasses to remind you that you're, everybody say it with me, you're in a movie. That's right. We're going to have fun with this. You're in a freaking movie. All right, so let me take these off. Get my guys, eyes adjusted here. I'll be looking at my screen and coming in with all of you and your great comments. Appreciate it. So it's, it's great to be back. I'm back in Mexico. <laughs> I'm in the studio. I got my mic back. I'm so grateful because of this. I'm so anal and, and I'm about precision. So like the, the song and the music and the microphone, the one I had is a traveling microphone. It had a lot of echo. I wasn't really crazy about it, but you know, Hey, when you travel, I try, I travel light. So, uh, I just made do with what I got, but now I'm back in the freaking studio and I'm going to be jamming. I have a lot of big D codes coming out. Big shout out to all you Patreon members. Thank you so very much for your continued support for this great research. I got a big humdinger coming out tomorrow on the fool decoded it will be exclusively for all of you patreon members and <laughs> you know like these are starting to really get crispy really getting tight this reality man really really getting tight so i really appreciate each and every one of you patreon member or not you i would suggest you go over there and at least join for free because i'm putting out you know some single graphics uh, upcoming previews, but you're going to get graphics that you wouldn't get anywhere else. Sometimes I do them on my Facebook, but I'm even kind of stop using, I'm, I'm really kind of leaning away from that, that social media and just moving it to Patreon. I'm, I'm about simple. So page the Patreon for the exclusives, and then you're going to have still the YouTube here. And these, what's your questions? I'm always going to run on the public YouTube. Uh, this is, you know, kind of my gift, my service to the world, so to speak. So I appreciate, for, <coughs> I appreciate each and every one of you for coming on here. Big shout out to my main man, Jordan over at Waters Above. Maybe Jordan will come into the house. Big shout out to Jason Brashears and company over at Archaics. I just reached out to him today because I said, I got to And I sent him a message. I'm like, I have a specific question for you regarding religion. So I'm waiting to hear back from him on that, his take on that. And a big shout out to... Um, Life Mastery Quest and the great Ola Wolny, way the hell up on 70 degrees north latitude, way up there uh, in Norway. And um, I just talked to her for quite some time today. We had a great conversation about doing this retreat uh, in this upcoming summer, if things prevail the way they're supposed to. And then we were also talking about doing one here in Mexico. So um, that one will be <coughs> much more affordable for most people. Uh, it's super inexpensive here, obviously, to even get Airbnbs, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, all right. So big shout out to the moderators, Pamela and Steven. I got the axes in here, the male, female, the Jack and Jill, the yin yang. Um, Pamela, I don't know how, I mean, S Steven... There's been only been a few times that he hasn't showed up, but Pamela shows up like every time. I don't, I don't know how she gets the, how she gets it done, man. So big shout out to the moderators. And I got, I got a few sneak peeks for all of you, like, like I try to do normally. More scripted reality, <laughs> scripted reality, folks. Oh my lord, it has to do with alcohol. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. It's really, really ridiculous. So you noticed in the beginning, I had a few slides, like I like to do some motivational stuff. And one of them was something that popped into my head just earlier today, which is you will justify, I'm not gonna, I'm paraphrasing this. You will justify your position on the world stage to solidify your position on the world stage. 
I, I had this conversation today with somebody very close to me just earlier, and it was that person was solidifying their position on the world stage with their truth. And that's what each and everybody, every one of you will do in this reality. You will stand in your truth. And if you want to change that, you have to obviously change direction, change parameters. But this is why it's, it's futile to, to debate and argue and because your truth is the only truth that matters. You don't have to live with my truth. I don't have to live with yours. But you will justify every, anything and everything you do, you will justify it based upon your position in life. That is, it. That is without exception. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. No, it's this. Oh, no, you're doing it wrong. That's your position. Why, do I, why am I doing it wrong? Because it's, it's you. I'm not you. So I think personally, this reality is coming around where you can start to take into consideration. And I think it's going to be solidified that your life is not your own. You're, you're just being used. You're along for the ride. There's, there's, there's bliss in that. There's bliss in it. But you got to know what your code is. All right. You got to know what your code is. Uh, speaking of codes, I, I want to, you know, folks, who. I got some, like, the dirty laundry on the Super Bowl 58 decoded. I mean, I got it wrong. And I got hammered for it. I actually got death. Th I got a death threat from it. Can you believe that? <laughs> I got a death threat because my Super Bowl 58 didn't come through. That's how, like, seriously embedded people are in this reality. It's just funny. And I just, it's just, la it's comical. I'm not going to get mad at it, but it's just a joke to me. But they see people, they, they just came out. They couldn't wait to jump on me and cruise, hang me up. Not really like, oh, well, you got the Chiefs right. You got 50% of it right, but you got the Lions wrong. No, it was like, you're an idiot. You're a moron. You're going to die. The, I mean, it was just, it was so like ridiculous. Like they just had, had to come out and say, oh, you didn't get it right. Of course, I, I, yeah, I know that. Thank you very much. People love their dirty laundry. And this is like Don Henley, the song Dirty Laundry. So true. People love it when you lose. <laughs> For sure. But of course, you know, the Chiefs, and the, the, tied to the, the, the Fallen Angels story, it's just so fascinating. And then now you have, and, and you have the two teams, 49ers Chiefs. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you a little sneak peek of that. This whole game is wrapped around cryptocurrency. You know, just a few weeks ago, Aaron, Dr. Aaron Domus, who got it completely wrong, uh, but he's, he was like crushing it all year. So he's on this ride and I just wrote his coattails, didn't use my normal methodologies with the cards and I didn't look at the book and I just was like, okay, the lions, yeah, that would seem the sun, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, two weeks ago, I had said, dude, don't rule the 49ers out because the 49ers represent the gold miners and that's all about cryptocurrency. This whole reality is based on the crypto. Leave the world behind. The movie was talking about the financial, uh, the fiat currency being completely ab abolished and moving toward cryptocurrency. So the whole theme, Denver Nuggets beating Miami and the NBA, they, they are the miners mining for gold. So I, I, didn't, lit I didn't use that. I, that was two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. And I didn't go with my instincts. I, I was riding his coattails and, you know, and we talked about that whole thing, Ravens and, and, um, and Chiefs, and he got it completely wrong. But okay, again, that doesn't mean he's doesn't get it right a lot, because he does. That's why I had him on. Thought it would be an interesting. And he's a, he's a smart dude, man. He's a very, so big shout out to him. He's a very smart guy, a very likable guy, very personable guy. I, I like the guy, you know? So, um, but it's so fascinating that both teams in the Super Bowl right now have red and gold. Huh. Gold is tied to money. So anyway, we'll, 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 we'll be, we'll be breaking this down a little bit, uh, during this, uh, what's your question? 73. So again, ladies and gentlemen, you know, the, the story is dream on dream on. That's the story. This, what's your question 73 73 
is if you've been paying attention <coughs> in Chaldean numerology, you're on television. That equals 73. We're, this is, what's your question? 73. You're inside of a movie. This, that's why I wore the sunglasses, to remind you. And that's what the song that that AI spit out. How the hell can it read my mind? Because it's all integrated. This should tell you clearly that it's, we're moving from this consciousness into this consciousness. Oh, I know some of you don't want that to happen and you, you may get that. I don't know, but how do you explain that? How does that happen when I, when I wasn't even talking out loud? You got to be the judge on that. Okay. Yeah, so Joran says, life is but a dream. I decoded that absolutely. I mean, I think that there's more truth to that than anything else. It just, the cosmos is having a dream. At times, it's having a nightmare. Right? At times, it's having a nightmare. And I had said this on my, if you uh, go, go support uh, those guys over at Rise TV. <coughs> Did a podcast with them last week. And... This is the first time I mentioned it, and it just jumped into my mind, was that uh, as I was still in Colombia, and I was walking to the gym, and what came into my mind was that, you know, one, in, in, there's a lot of stories with theology where one day to God is a thousand days to us. So I'm like, okay, well, we sleep, you know, part of the day, we're awake part of the day. Uh, sometimes we have nightmares. So is it plausible to think that the cosmos is having a dream when it goes to sleep on half of its day? So a thousand days would be 500 days and 500 and 500. I mean, is the cosmos, is, did, did it have a nightmare? And now it's coming out of that and it wakes up and it's like, damn, what the hell's been going on? But it already programmed it because it's clear. You see the predestined reality. So it's already been programmed. But at the same time, you know, when it wakes up, maybe we, we, we become co-creators. We, we, we become conscious of, of that. And now we get to be like the free guy, the movie that came out in 2022. So. Forbidden says, Logan, please be careful. The nutters out there, I had a feeling, download a few months back that your life was in danger. Folks, I have no fear of death. I don't, it doesn't, if I get shot, killed, what? It, okay, cool, great. I'm ready to go home. I'm ready. I'm ready to go home. So I'm not in control of my reality. I'm going to do my job, my responsibility according to my code. I'm not going to sidestep to please people. That's on, that's their problem, not mine. So I get it. I appreciate Forbidden. I appreciate your considerations and, you know, looking out and the love and, su and support and all that stuff and blessings to you. But again, you know, my stance on is that, you know, I'm fulfilling my obligations in this reality. That's it. It's very, very, very simple. Tiffany says no such thing as death. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Physical there is. But transfer, I got a ringing in my ear right now. Transformation of energy. TJ says, I can read your mind. <coughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious because it's tied to serious. When you see this, somebody does that, that means serious. That's how I have it pegged. You don't have to agree, but that's, that's on the dollar bill, on the United States dollar bill. That's serious. The all-seeing eye. Seriously. Serious. Matthew Garvin says, how's Santos? Uh, I, haven't, um, I haven't talked to him in, in quite some time. Uh, he messaged me not too long ago, actually. On, I don't, He wanted me to share something, but it was dirty laundry. And I'm like, eh. It's on a different trajectory, man. I miss the old Santos. And I love him like a brother, man. I, 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 I but I just, I, I resonate. I, lo I like, I love his old stuff, not, not his new stuff, not on that trajectory. I'm 
So big shout out to Santos. What he has done for the world. I, I don't care of his of what he has been doing lately, like the behavior that I don't resonate with. He's on his own journey, but that does not exclude all the greatness that that dude has put out onto the world stage. It will never exclude it. It will never dirty that. It will never ruin his resume, in my opinion. That guy came, showed up and he did his job and he excelled at it. And I am very grateful that he was born as a human being. I have a lot of love and respect for that guy. And I just leave it at that. I look at the good in him. That's it. That's what I do for people. I look at the good in people. And then you could see the, the, the traumas and the bad and all that stuff. We all have that. So yeah, Santos is golden. Shout out to Santos, you know? So again, um, you know, like I owe, like a lot of my decodes were inspired by that guy. I, I love him like a brother, man. I mean, I got to live down the street from him. I got to share some time. He's a beautiful human being in, in person. <laughs> you know, we're not talking about the things that he can't, he, that he despises. But other than that, he's a beautiful man. If you get to know him, man, he's, just, just a beautiful soul, man, you know. He is a great teacher. He's done amazing work, and um, I, I value him, so. Jeremiah says, Agape Santos. Yeah. But I don't, you know, I, I and I, I tell him straight up, like I don't, I don't, I don't agree with his behavior. I don't, I don't resonate with it. It's not, it's not coming from a place of love, in my opinion. It's not. It's coming f like you. I just, it's just, I, I don't know what's going on, but he's, you know, he's doing his journey, his job. But I just, I just don't resonate with it. So I miss the old Santos. That's it. And if I could have a conversation with him, if I, if I he could come right in my place and sit down, man, we'd freaking chop it up. And he's the bomb. That's what I value in that guy. The guy is amazing. And that's what I look at in that guy. So, Yes, yeah, Santos Bonacci, Droid Sapiens X. Interesting. Uh... Thank you, Stephen. Unconditional love equals 73. That's right. Unconditional love. What is unconditional love? You do you. I get to do me. And we, we get to be merry in this reality. I mean, the, 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 the creator of the human design, ra u ra -hu. He had a quote and he said that exactly, like kind of that. I didn't even know he had that. I've been saying this for a long time. Of course, you know, like a lot of the like minds, we have a lot of like minds. And he said, anything else is torture. If you're, if you're not doing love is allowing, big shout out to Jordan. If you're not doing love is allowing, it's torture. Because you're, you're like, oh, you're wrong. You got it wrong. It's like, man, ease up. <coughs> it's okay. You don't have to be right. That, you know what people do? They sacrifice their love in life so they get to be right. The payoff is you get to be right. The next time you have an argument with your husband or wife or girlfriend or boyfriend, if you're consciously aware in that moment of having that argument, you will see that it is you trying to be right and prove him or her wrong, and you will sacrifice true love to get that reward and payoff. Big shout out to Werner Erhard and Landmark. That's see, that's what you get. You get a, you will justify your position. You will anything outside of the position that you justify. Most people are programmed to just hammer other people. That's not love is allowing. That's not unconditional love. That is conditional. And and I mean, human beings, we're not even none of us here are unconditional love. We we strive to be that. We we strive to be authentic, but we're not. We're not. We're not authentic human beings. We're too, we're too afraid to be wrong. We're too afraid to look bad. It's just, it's, that's why I say life's a joke. It's, it's not to be taken so seriously. Seriously? Seriously.
I mean, can you imagine if we were in a world where everybody just accepted everybody? I mean, you would have your good and bad at the shroud, but everybody would accept the good and bad. That to me would be complete bliss. <clears throat> but no, you got to have the laws and the order and, the, and it's got to be this and it's power grabs and it's just, but that's the way this reality is constructed. You don't like being a part of this reality. You don't like the laws and the, and the, the way, well, talk, talk to whatever you think God is. Have a conversation. Tell him what you think or tell it what you think. See what, see what kind of response you get. I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like the way this is going on. See what kind, see if it just moves and changes for you. You think the salmon swimming upstream? You think that they like the bear standing over the stream, chewing, like grabbing them out of midair? Probably not. But in the spawning and the, the grizzly bear goes there, picking them, cherry picking them, man, pick, picking them off. You gotta, you, you gotta, you're not gonna, the, the salmon is not gonna be a fan of the grizzly. The grizzly bear is the devil to the salmon. Just like the, uh, the ladybug is the devil to the aphid on, on the, on the rose bush. Yeah. Absolutely. The devil is everywhere. It's what you don't like. Everything that you don't like is the devil. Do you like time? Well, time's going to get you eventually over time. You will decay and then you will sin and you will make mistakes as we call them, but it's not mistakes. There are just actions in your life. And then one day you're going to face death. And the devil gets you. All right, so let me, uh, let me get my cursor out. Let me just jump into a little bit of a sneak peek on uh, scripted reality. Hang on. <coughs> Why is this not pulling up? Okay, it's not working. All right, hang on one sec, ladies and gentlemen. So interesting, I came back to Mexico and nothing's working right. My refrigerator went broke, water leaking, <laughs> my, is brand new, and my computer just decided to throw up a hissy fit on some things. It's kind of funny. Okay, anyway, I guess we're not going to use the cursor, but uh, let, me, uh, let me share my screen here and let me give you amazing decoders, um, a sneak peek. And uh, I, I, I want it, I, I, do, I wish I would have taken a picture. I got this, I got this idea, I was inspired from, from Facebook and it was a, a woman on there who I'm friends with, which I've never met, I don't even know who it is. And she had this quote about this guy who was a former alcoholic and he had said that when I, this is, I'm paraphrasing now, the guy says, when I, when I'm late for church and I walk in and people hear me, they turn around and they look like they're in disgust that I'm late. Like, how dare you show up late to the house of the Lord? But he says, when I walk into an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting and I'm late, people run up and they hug me. And they congratulate me because they know that I, this today was a win because I actually showed up, even though I showed up not on time, I, I was being celebrated because I showed up. It's just so amazing how the perception of the human being experience is so, it's, I don't even know what to say. There's not even a word for it, but the programming, and this is what I got. So how inspiring is that, man? This guy saying this, man, absolutely just blew my doors off. And so I'm like, oh, let me look into Alcoholics Anonymous. So this is the logo here to the left. Maybe you're somebody who's a part of that. And I will just clearly say, you know, my take on, I would never walk into a meeting if I was a former alcoholic and say, my name is Logan and I'm an alcoholic. I think that is absolutely the worst thing to do. I think you should say, hi, my name's Logan and I used to be an alcoholic. That is where you're going to make some potential in this reality. But that's my opinion. But let me show you how scripted this reality is. And man's not running this reality. And this organization was absolute support for that. 
and it started <coughs> with the two founders, Bob and Bill, Robert Holbrook Smith and William Griffith Wilson, the two founders, the two founders of Alcoholics Anonymous. I, I only read Bob's story. He, he barely made it through college, uh, really struggled with alcoholism. Uh, and, and then he was a co-founder of Alcoholics Anonymous. And why is this a scripted reality? Because of their birthdays. He was born on August 8th, Wilson on November 26th. So I'm gonna look to the cards of illumination and here are their two cards, their birth cards. Bob Smith gets the five of diamonds and Wilson gets the seven of hearts. Now, to digress, like some of you say, well, where's that coming from? Here, this is the, you should all have this boilerplate chart. Okay, so November 26th, there it is, the seven of hearts. And then August 8th is the five of diamonds. Okay, the five of diamonds. And you see the 57 there, right? That's the Truman Show equals 57 in numerology. But that wasn't the big takeaway here, folks. Are you ready for this? What is the numerology of Alcoholics Anonymous? Bam! How about that? The 75, which is the two cards. Scripted reality. These guys, see, this guy, I mean, you think about it. He was an alcoholic. His pledge to the world for the greater good was you're going to become an alcoholic you're going to overcome it and you're going to join with bill and you're going to start this organization called alcoholics anonymous and you're going to help a lot of people <clears throat> get out of their prison this, this, this is this is card for this turns into the seven of cups which can be card 42 and he has the 69th card the 69 when you go to the the tarot here it is, right here. Hard times. The church, see, this card shows you that you're this struggling individual and you have your, your savior, the church. The, the, this is the yin-yang, out in the cold, and then you can go, the church is right behind you. Just look to your left and walk in the door and you'll be saved. That's Bob Smith's card. And then the seven of cups, which, is, which can be card 42 or 43. 43 is the 14th prime number. 14 is tied to the word Satan, God, time, the remote control of God, all the choices that it can utilize through mankind being used. So, folks, what, what are the odds that these two guys and their birth cards match up to what they named it? You think they were fans of the cards? No. See, these guys had no choice. They were destined to come together to form this organization to help people, just like you're doing your job. I mean, I don't, I don't know really, like, <laughs> it's, it's just, it's never ending, the, these, these sinks, these codes. Never ends. It just continues to show. And, it, and again, the, what's the, what is the fact? Once you see this and you say, well, wow, there's a lot of merit to that. You now have a foundation of, okay, well, we live in a predestined reality. Do you know how much that is, allows you to be freer? Because you, you then don't have to defend your position in life. You just got to go find it. Seek out your journey in life and then freaking own it and go do it and know that you're paying your homage like you're you're like I went to prison I've been in prison and it's I wasn't even just not even to federal prison I was in prison when I was in a religion that it was a prison <laughs> I've done it many times I've done it several times but I won't I don't regret any of it because it is it has forged my fires it is I've walked the coals and now the final the product right now you're seeing Logan this is my my destiny and I don't need to defend my truth and neither do you you just need to figure out what your truth is subject to change always and then just go out there and put it out on the world stage and then love is allowing unconditional love 
which equals the number 73. Thank you, Stephen, for reminding me of that. That is the game of life. And unconditional love means you do you, I'm going to do me, and everybody's happy. But we don't get that in this reality. But there are selected people in this reality that are starting to do that. And I think that's where the magic is. Okay? I think that's where the magic is. Live and let live, baby. That's been my motto for so long. I, I, I grew up in a small little town in Connecticut, right on the border of Massachusetts and Rhode Island. It was called the Tri-State Area. And just right up the street, and my aunt still lives on this big-ass lake, amazing lake. And the the name of it is, it's, it, it's the Nipmuc Indians, and it's a long-ass name. But the meaning of the lake is you fish on your side, I fish on my side, and nobody fishes in the middle. And here I talk about neutrality and the three spectrums of that. You, do, you fish on your side, I fish on mine, and you know, don't come over, I come, and I'm not gonna come over on your side. I mean, talk about my life being scripted. It's so insane how scripted my life is. Whew. So, you know, uh, to remind you with the tarot, right? Um, that and the 10. It's mostly the nine, but I'm gonna give you the 10, the, the bleed over. So in the tarot, there are two ways to look at it. 77 cards and 78. Why? Because the fool is card zero. There, you, how do you count a card as the first card when it has a zero on the card. I, I, it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. You can, it, it, the hidden meaning is it's the card 22. It starts over the arcana and to the minor arcana. And now you have 78 cards and there's merit to that because of that 78 and how big it is. But 77 uh, is tied to the iris <laughs> in the Iridium and Hotel Cal California. So there are two cards, all the, each position, 70, 73, is going to be uh, two cards. The King of Pentacles is going to be card 77 and 78. Okay, so the, today's, uh, what's your question, number 73, is the Nine of Pentacles. Okay, if you use 78 cards. And she's telling you, this is like, your manifestations are complete. Be the star of the show. You know, you know, go out there and do your thing. And then the 10 of pentacles moves into that 73rd position if we don't use the fool twice. And the 10 of pentacles is the 10 of diamonds and the 10 of diamonds is card 36 and 36 is tied to <coughs> the 151. It's tied to the word operating system. So the, the theme of this, what's your question, which right here, this is, I, I kind of, this is so interesting because I had, I had AI draw this and I, I had said, draw, I don't remember what I used, but draw up a Last Supper rendition, a cosmic version of it. And, you know, I added the 73 here and I added the smiley face because I, I want to have fun with this. And it had seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people on the left and nine people on the right. 79 gold. 719. That's tied to the 41st prime number. Like, how, how does this thing know that? Because, ladies and gentlemen, you're living in, it's, we're merging into this. It's already, it's already happening. It's already happening. So the, the theme here is, is to be the star of the show. No need to defend yourself anymore. Just be the best little devil you can be. And I say that like, well, what do you mean I'm a devil? You're a sinner. Little devil down here. And if that offends you, well, like... Take the stick out of your ass, okay? 
And that's my final answer. If you get offended by me having a, a smiley face over Jesus in the Last Supper, if you get offended by me saying, be the best little devil you can be, well, you got to stick up your ass. Let it lighten up a little bit. Okay? I'm not mocking. I'm not, I'm not uh, defiling. I'm not bl doing blasphemy. Like, these are words. If you want to use those in your vocabulary, by all means, go ahead. Those are very limiting. It puts you in a box. It puts you in a vocabulary prison. Yes, I'm having a little glass of wine. This the wine that I got when I went to the store, uh, I look at numbers, the price, the prices, and, and all that stuff. And I and this one, this bottle was 226 uh, pesos, which is like I don't know, 13 bucks or something like that. Uh, and or 20 bucks or something, but it's good. I wish I had the name of it. It's good. It's probably, it's the best wine I've had in, in a long time. I mean, I don't drink a lot of wine, but man, shit is good. Whew. <laughs> Fly in the wall. So yeah, big shout out to Jason. You know, he, he, he even knows you're trapped, man. That's why his tagline is break free or die trying. <laughs> he even knows it. He knows it. I love that guy. I got to I got to sit down right with him, man, and rub shoulders. And he's a smart dude, man. Uh, Mr. Man's asking, "What instrument?" Let's get to some questions. I've been just being a chatty doll here. Uh, what instruments do I play? I I play guitar, N not amazing, but I have an acoustic. Uh, I have a Taylor Mini in my bedroom. It's pretty pretty awesome. I do like the electric, but I don't have an electric. Uh, I play a little piano, self taught. I love the piano, and I mess around with Garage Band and do electronic shit. You know, some of the songs that you hear, and some of the decos, I actually created those. I just it's not whatever. I don't really give myself credit for those, but. <clears throat> <clears throat> TJ says, explain your perception of 44 to 159. I don't remember the, 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 the connecting point to that. Um, I mean, the, the 159 is tied to the sun. The 159 is tied to Jesus and the sun. That I can tell you. So if you see the permutation, the 519, the 915, the 951, the 159, you, those, this is how you... I look at numbers, me, I do as a decoder. If you see a, a string of numbers, they don't have to be exactly matched up. Palindromes, the mirrors, if the sequence is there, mixed up or not, they're still going to be tied together. Okay. Well, I appreciate each and every one of you for showing up here. Uh, yeah, uh, in, let's see, uh, nine, 10, 12, in like four hours, it'll be my solar return. I was born at 1.03 a.m. You know, this is the thing. So like scripted reality, right? So let me take you on a little journey. Uh, let's see if I can find this. Let me take you all on a little journey with me. So I was born at 1.03 a.m. That's my birth time on my birth certificate. 103, is that a prime number? Absolutely it is. 27th prime number, which is kind of fascinating because my father's last name is Payette. <laughs> 27. 
right? Uh, I was really, I grew up in this religion, 27. Sports, same thing as religion, just a different format, 27, which is currency. It's all being harvested and mined for currency. That's why it doesn't matter what you pay your energy to, it's all gonna get you in the end. But anyway, this is, this is and this is my life path. If you, I want it, I want to say here a little, a little uh, gift to you is that the normal way to look at life paths, this is my birthday, right? My solar return. That's, that's my normal solar return. Okay. And this is with February being the, the second month because the Julian calendar, <clears throat> they move January and February in front of March. But... If you go pre-Julian, February becomes the 12th month. You see? And, I, and I'm, not, I'm not saying this to mesh up the 27 with my last name and the 103 being my birth time, being the 27th prime number right here. I'm not, this is my birth time. I'm not doing this to mesh up to get, to get this and try to make you, I'm not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. I'm certainly not trying to get one past you. If, you, if you're willing to go look at this, I will bet that you will resonate with it a lot because I become the nine life path, which is the hermit. And that's, I resonate with that so much more than I do with the 26. Even though, of course, yod heh vah -Hey is 26. I was raised in that religion, <laughs> you know? So there is, there is merit to, to this. So I, I'm an eight life path in the Gregorian uh, calendar, but pre-Gregorian, I become the, the nine life path. And I would encourage all of you to do that. And also what you can do is you can go to the cards of illumination, the birth chart, right? And so here's my, my birth card, the eight of spades. But if I go back to, if I go back two months, why would I go back two months? Because it, it removes February being the, the, the second month. I would have to go back to December. December would become the 12th, the, the second month. Okay, you go back two months and I would go here and I would be the Ace of Diamonds, which just so happens to be card number 27. It would be card number 27. Okay, so go back. So you can do this with your own stuff, folks. You can, you can, um, I think it came out wrong when I said December was the second month. I didn't mean that. Uh, but you could, you, you should take a look at your life path based upon a subtraction of two months. So if you're born in May, May is normally the fifth month in the Gregorian, subtract two, it would be the third month. Your, your, your month would be three. If you're born in January, January would become the 11th month. I'm sorry, it would, would become the, uh, the ninth month. No, 11th month, it was 11. February's 12, January is 11, December is 10, uh, uh, November is, Nine. October is eight. September is seven. Uh, August is six, and so on and so forth. Okay. And I, I, I will encourage all of you to do that. And I, I will bet that you will resonate a lot with not just the life path, but the card that resembles that two months prior. I'll, I'll bet on it. Okay. Flip mode says, Logan is cooking. I'm always cooking. I'm cooking. Jordan's getting spicy. No. Yeah. Coriander, Coriander says, whoa, I'm the emperor. Yeah. So go read these layers. See what, what stands out for you. Uh, the music playing <coughs> AD is um, is called Ultra Ultra Polis Moody Ambient. It's like a cyberpunk with rain and stuff. It's just kind of cool, cool setting.
affable zombie says, so so say I solve Liber Primus with mirrors similar and linked to Al Alistair Crowley's Book of the Law. What kind of path am I on? It's, it's a very challenging uh, question to answer because I don't know everything about you. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what your code looks like. I, I, I mean, that's like trying to guess somebody, it's trying to guess some, what kind of car somebody drives. You know, it's very, it's very, I couldn't answer that. So if you're getting synchronicities, my suggestion is to follow that. Follow it until you exhaust it. Follow that path until you exhaust it. Just like the example of a surfer. If you're somebody who surfs, what do you do? A surfer paddles out and they wait for the big wave, right? Primarily. And when you get on that wave as a surfer, you don't jump halfway off the ride. You ride that sucker as long as you can. Same thing with life. Start to look at life like rides. Like when you're on a good one, like everything's happening for you, like, oh my God, money's coming. It's like, that's fun. It, it, it might not last. So enjoy it. Be fruitful, be merry. And then when the ride ends, you paddle back out and you look for a bigger ride, a better ride. One with variety. If you pad, if you're somebody who's a surfer, and I'm sure it never gets old. I've never surfed before, but if you, that's probably not even a good example. But it's like, how about a car? If you own a, if you own a vehicle, some of you traded your, like the average person trades their car every three years. That's how leases came about. Why is that? Because people get bored. They want variety. That's the spice of life. Okay. Brentwood, pop that cork, baby. I've had the Apothic Red. Um, this is freaking really good. I, this is like a reserve. I, I, it's got like a bird on it too. It's the best one I've had in so long. And again, the reason why I chose it is because it was 200 and I didn't even mention that. 226 pesos, that's raw. So of course the number stood out to me, tied to the Christ. So I'm like, uh, am I doing the ritual? Well, no, but it's kind of fun, the 226. Uh, AD, thank you so much for the comments. Appreciate you. Uh, how much protein are you roughly eating per day? Uh, I don't count. Th th this is a good question. I'm, I'm glad you asked because I wanted to talk about this and I, I just remembered. So I, I want to get into this. Let's get into some health and wellness. <clears throat> Let me answer Denise's question. She says, Logan, when we do the minus two months, it also equals a lesser year. No, no, no. Don't reduce the year. Don't reduce the year. Just go back two months. Okay? Don't reduce the year. Um, let's get into some health and wellness. I, when I was in Colombia, I was doing some different things. I was, I'm always experimenting, but what I'm now into and what I learned, I have this amazing book. It's, it's, I'll have to share it with all of you in the description if I can remember. Um, it's on the Tao and spirituality. It's an amazing book. And on the plane coming back, I pulled out my iPad. I have it on my iPad. And I was reading uh, the book for like two hours. And I haven't read books. I do a lot of reading, but I hadn't read books in a while. But this thing, man, and I was reading it. And I'm highlighting. And what I got, the message I got from it was it was a... Um, it was a it was getting into food now it was a terminology called trophology or trophology which the definition of that if i even said it right is when you eat specific foods throughout the day you don't it's it's not really mixing it, it's mixing certain foods and not mixing certain foods and this is how ignorant i like i'm certified in nutrition but 
I wasn't, I wasn't really aware of even this terminology. This is how many things escape us in this reality. Maybe you know about this, but let me tell you, I, this is what I've been doing now <coughs> since I got back for about a week now. And it's, it's really made a difference. Trophology is realizing what foods you should be mixing together and what foods you shouldn't be mixing together. So for example, the rule in trophology is you should never, never mix a protein with a starch. You should never mix rice with a protein, fish, whatever. Because the way the digestion is set up, it has to, like, it, it makes it very difficult for the body to digest multiple foods that, that they require different things. It's not just as simple as you eat and the acid goes in. No, it's not that simple. And I'm going to tell you, like, I, so here's my regimen. This is what I've been doing, right? I'll make it really easy on all of you. I wake up and I have a liter of water. And if I can get it done, I have my hydrogen water. Then my very first meal in the blender, I do a lot of blender stuff because it helps ease, ease up on the digestion. I've been doing, oh, then I do, I'm sorry, then I do a, a half a lemon and apple cider vinegar. That will start to help the, the acid in your stomach. And boy, do people need that in this reality. Because a lot of people have GERD, they have heartburn. Not because of maybe, well, I have too much acid. No, you don't produce enough. And there's a lot of factors into that. Sodium chloride, and there's a lot of factors that people are deficient in, and the reason why their body doesn't, and they, so they don't digest, they don't assimilate, and next, and then you have autoimmune deficiencies, you have skin eruptions, so many different things can happen, excuse me. So I do the apple cider vinegar and the lemon in a glass of, uh, I usually use my wine glass, you know, I'll fill it up, two tablespoons, three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, chug that, have my liter of water. My first meal, has been uh, grapefruits and oranges. I'll do a whole big ass grapefruit, either ruby red or regular, cut it, throw it in the blender, maybe one or two oranges, <clears throat> put a little bit of water in there out of my copper vessel. I blend that up really good and then I drink that. That's more acid. So it is strictly using foods that are in accordance with what they're built upon and that is acid, acid. Then after that, I go to my watermelon. Just watermelon. Sometimes I do celery juice. You can mix uh, vegetables with anything. Vegetables are the most versatile food. So, I, of course, I've been doing a lot of still doing my watermelon, right? Still doing my watermelon. And what does watermelon do? It increases your citrulline malate. What does citrulline malate do? It increases the, the blood flow because it opens up the blood vessels. So, basically, it's like you're turbocharging your blood, the nitric oxide, which is what your body is going to utilize to open up those blood vessels, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to make your blood flow better. You know, uh, watermelon is red. Your blood is red. The beets are red. The blood is red. So, you want to stick to the colors. It's very simple. So, I've been doing that, that meal, the orange and the grapefruit that, and the watermelon. And then I go to the gym. I don't even eat. I haven't been eating any. Like, usually, back in the day, it was oatmeal and you know, heavy this and heavy. I just go light, man. And I got tons of energy going to the gym. And then, um, and then usually I'm having like one or two meals and maybe sometimes with the watermelon juice, I'll eat some pistachios or some cashews or some pecans or walnuts, whatever I got with the, with the juice. You can mix nuts with the juice, right? And then the, the if you're going to have a meal, if you're going to have a big meal, you, mixing, this is the thing I got, I, I, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm, I'm not going to use that word, but I'm saying is that this trophology, there's merit to it because if you go study nature, na you don't see the lions mixing their food. You don't see the gorillas mixing, they're not sitting down with a fork and knife mixing their food. We do that as human beings. The digestion, it requires a certain amount of this and that. So when you start to use the trophology and you realize what you can, you should and shouldn't mix to have the best result for digestion, it's been, it's been glorious. And I really wanted to talk about this. So the question you had asked, 
is how much protein. I don't count my protein. I, I still do my whey protein. I still will have, but now I'm not doing the crazy shakes I used to have. You know, if you're getting bloating and, and gas and, you know, it's like your, your body's maybe trying to tell you something. Like a, a meal for me is like a whole bag of peas, like a, a, bi- a bag of peas, but that's a starch. So what do I eat with the peas? Nothing. I, heat, I, I, I defrost, I, do, I buy the frozen peas, I defrost them. I, I, don't, I just put them out. I, like I got a bag sitting on the floor right now. That's how I defrost my peas. And the meal I'll have is a whole bag of peas with some coconut oil or olive oil, salt and pepper. That's it. Maybe some garlic powder. And it's, for me, it's amazing because I'm a minimalist. Maybe that's not like, oh, it's kind of boring. Well, I, I'm eating to live, man. I'm not eating right now. Like, you know, 50, I'm going to be 51 to, to, in a couple hours. For me, it's prevention at this point. It's, it's a matter of like, it may not be like what I used to have. The all-American pizza, spaghetti, hot dogs, hamburgers. Like, I, I can't do that anymore. My body's like, screw you. I'm not, and it will punch me in the face if I do that. Uh, 20, 30 years ago, I could get away with it. Well, I can't do that when the body's not a young spring chicken anymore. You got to do some things differently. <clears throat> so if you're going to have any kind of shit food, like dead foods, like my favorite food is pizza. Well, it has things in there that shouldn't be mixed. Bread and cheese. Hell no, you, we shouldn't be mixing those. So you would obviously have that on your reward day. And not doing that all the time. You know, back in the day, I was really disciplined. My reward day was once a week. I'm getting back to that now. Once a week, maybe even once every two weeks. But, you know, but I'm just saying is when you start to look at trophology and you realize that certain foods that you mix together, they're not digesting the same way. This is where you're going to have issues. And I'll tell you, man, just a week just a week doing this my stomach has flattened out the most it's ever flattened out i've always had kind of a flat stomach but it's like you can just (coughs) notice tell flat and that's because i'm doing the acids solely by themselves and then i'm doing the protein solely but so yeah so if i have um you know listen all of you want me to be honest and transparent, so I'm going to be honest and transparent with all of you. I'm not going to beat around the bush. And if this offends you because you're a certain way of eating, well, then I again, I, I hope you can rectify that. I was a I was a straight vegan for about five years of my life. I did it, and my my health was not good. I'm not saying that to justify my position and what I choose to do now. So I just want to be clear. And you don't have to believe me. I'm being as honest, as transparent as I can. I was a vegan and my health plummeted. Now, I wasn't running parallel lives and doing two different regimens. So I can't go back and say, well, was it that? Was it this? No, I I did my blood tests. You got to do your blood panels, folks. The blood panel is going to, it's your your lifeline. It's going to tell you what you're deficient in, et cetera, et cetera. I was anemic. I was anemic for years. I didn't even know it. I wasn't running the test on anemia. That's why you got to do the full panels. And then I had H. pylori. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, I do have my Chiron in my sixth house, and that's the house of health and wellness. My challenge in this reality is health and wellness. And it's not just in my sixth house, it's in my 26th nashakra, which is tied to the word, my, 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 uh, I'm sorry, tied to the, uh, tied to my life path in Gregorian and the word, uh, the element iron is the 26th element, blood, just neat. Iron is essential for anemia and I suffer from anemia. It's crazy. But remember folks, we are so damaged and traumatized and like, uh, you know, like your genetic marker, there's the genetic markers in your life. There's no cookie cutter way to do this anymore, man. If somebody says, oh, you gotta be straight this and for you, don't try to sit here and tell me I gotta do this because of this, because that's what works for you. You got so many uh, influences out there. They're young, 25, 30, and like, look at me, I'm this and I'm that. But yeah, but you're freaking 25 and 30, man. You haven't even, you haven't even put any age on yet. Wait till you get another 10 years and see what happens. And it's based on genetic markers as well. What you're prone to get, your scripted reality. So I went that whole route. 
And then I went and I, I lost a lot of weight, uh, you know, and I, whatever it is, what it is. I mean, it was a big ego thing. I, I dropped like 30 pounds. It was a big ego buster for me. It's kind of like a girl who has breast implants and she gets them taken out. That's going to really crush your ego. What'd you get them for in the first place? Enhancements. Look at me. Same thing with a guy that has muscle. You get big and you walk into a room and you get noticed. You, you shrink down 30 pounds. You don't get noticed anymore. It's about looking good. Life's about looking good. So I know these parameters, right? So it's been the biggest ego crusher of my life was living through this bodybuilding, you know, being much bigger, more muscular to, you know, to then coming off like doing, I've done the whole thing, HGH, testosterone, IGF, the peptides. I used to have a company. I've done it like a hormone replacement therapy, worked at a clinic. I've done all that stuff. <clears throat> it was fun. I missed some of it, you know, but anyway, um, I got off topic, but now after going through decoder reality and learning about our reality and how it works, how the machinations of this reality works. And I'm again, not justifying, um, you know, if you're something like if you're vegan, especially vegans, they get really triggered. How could you? And I'm like, do you realize a lot of the products that you buy are, are based upon animals getting killed? Where do you think your products come from? Oh, I, I, then you know what? I, I, the answer we get is, well, I, I don't know that. Oh, so you're oblivious to what you don't know. So you, that's your just, see, that's the justification. And again, I'm not saying they're wrong because everybody justifies their position to solidify their position. And I'm doing the same thing for you. But again, I'm going on logic and common sense. And so I went back to, it was my long drawn ass freaking story, but I went back to being an omnivore again. And I'm, and it's, and, and yeah, and I'm an animal lover. And I like, I like animals more than I do humans. I'm feeding, I got like 10 stray cats out here last, last night, feeding the cats, feeding the pregnant dog over there. So for me, with the, with the protein, if you're gonna have the protein, that's my long drawn out story. If you're gonna have protein, <coughs> you should have it by itself or with a salad. Again, vegetables are, are so versatile. But if you, you, you know, I used to have a lot of peas pasta and like salmon or uh, you can't combine those but vegetables broccoli or salad or celery or cucumbers or yeah if you're gonna have a protein then you would mix that with like a salad that is the in trophology that's the correct way to eat so that way you will digest the food and your body won't suffer from the digestion. So I'm trying to give all of this information to all of you because this is like new stuff for me, but it's working. So like, check it out for yourself. There's a really cool book. I'll have to get the name of the book. I don't have it off the top of my head. I'll put it in the description of this video. So if you're interested in this, you can get it online. It's a PDF. It's like from the 1960s or something like that. And it's anthropology and what you should and shouldn't mix. <clears throat> it's fascinating. But the you got to do what works for you. I mean, look, you know what I look forward to as a human being? There, right now, there's a company, there's a few companies out there that are creating animal-based protein in a laboratory, in a Petri dish, for simple terms. I can't wait for that to happen. Because now there's no more, there's no more animals being killed. Case closed. But yeah, the, the, the treatment, like, you know, people look at what they look at and they see what they see and and we have these reactions, emotional reactions towards suffering and cruelty. Yes. But I will remind all of you, you that have these emotional reactions towards the, 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 the this stuff that you're seeing, you're a kid. You, do you realize you're a killing machine? Do you realize that? Are you aware that you walk outside and you're constantly killing things and making things suffer? 
Maybe you step on an insect and you break its leg and it can't walk and it's just defenseless. And then some insect attacks it because you weren't watching out where you were walking. I know this is very like, oh, that's just, huh? no, no. I'm being absolutely serious here. See, if, if you can't pay attention to everything, like, man, you got a life to live. This world is cruel. And again, I'm not justifying my position and making up some story that's frivolous. No, you and me and everybody here are killing machines. Whether you're vegan, vegetarian, carnivore, you are a killing machine. A lot of the products that you buy, toothpaste and toothbrushes and things from the factory, those people that are working in the factory are eating animals, if you're a vegan. So you're supporting the products you're buying. Well, I can't help it because I need the products. Oh, so now you're just, see, see how we justify our position? Oh, but I didn't know about that. You, now you know about it. Now you know that the people in the factories are eating animals and they're, and they're supporting that kind of stuff that you're completely against. Now you know. So now there's no excuse of saying, well, I didn't know and playing that stupid ignorant card. No, there's no ignorance now. Folks, we live in a freaking cruel world. Just try to offset it a little bit. I don't have to feed the stray animal. I don't, I don't have to go out there and feed the stray cats and dogs. I just be like, hey, screw you guys. You guys do whatever you gotta do. I, I, hey, fend for yourself. No, my heart goes out. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do what I can. So like I spend my money on, like the shit's expensive now. Cat food and dog food, it's expensive. I don't know, but you notice what prices are going up. But I'd rather spend my money on that than buy myself this or that. Like I just get stuff that I need. That's me though. You don't have to follow my lifestyle. But I'm, I, I, I'm, and I'm not doing that to offset that I'm a killing machine. I'm doing it because I naturally feel pulled to do it. The cats can eat watermelon. I, I've tested this. I've tested it time and time again with, with animals. And they always go for what they instinctively want. Whatever they're designed to eat. <coughs> I mean, if you bring a little furry dog and you plop a plate of chicken and a plate of broccoli, I know there will be some people that say, no, they'll eat the broccoli. 99.9% .9 of them will go eat the chicken first. I right? you get these people say, oh, well, your teeth are not designed. Do you even know what you're talking about? <laughs> these are the things that I like look at in this world and I'm just like, oh my God, FML. So if you look at the, uh, AD says, my Venus in Aquarius makes me feel like I'm becoming more Aquarius. This is a good, another good point because if you look at your astrological chart, you will see what you're designed to be like in this world. I had mentioned this on my last podcast. I had said, I'm, I have a really close family member of mine. If you look at her chart, she was, she's a animal rights activist. She is a straight up vegan. And you can see it in her chart. What am I gonna do? Am I gonna go out there and say she's wrong? No, but the, the, the gift of life here is that you came into this reality to be that. Congratu great. Like I, I res that's why I'm a fan of all, your co all of you here. I'm not just happy that you're here and you're leaving your comments. I really love all of you. Like I appreciate and respect your code. I respect your code. I respect your opinion. I may not agree with it, but I respect it. I appreciate it. I'm a fan of your life. But what I'm not a fan of is when people start to do the, un the, the conditional part. Well, it's got to be this because of this condition and that condition. And that's not unconditional. We, we're not even unconditional human beings. We're so far away from unconditional, but at least we can try to be unconditional.
Uh, I, if people would go and look at nature, if you go, this is all I do now. If you study nature, you will see a very cruel world. And it's desi it's perfectly imperfect. Your immune system has, you know, the immune system hangs out with the bacteria, viruses, and parasites because its its job is to take it out. The cops and robbers go on your body as the, the 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 lymphocytes and the white blood. The immune system's job <coughs> is to take care of the invaders. Well, what created the invaders? Simple question: What created the bacteria, viruses, and parasites? Same thing that created the immune system. Hello, common sense. Because you wouldn't create something unless it needed it, it, it without a job. Its job is to protect. Well, you don't create something without a job. You don't create something without a purpose. Everything in this reality has a purpose, a responsibility. And that's the way this reality is, is based upon. It's survival. And whatever is ruling over this reality, it's using you for its survival. The voice in your head, it, it's using you for its survival. Anything outside of your truth is going to be wrong. Because anything outside of you that's not part of your truth is wrong and you will protect your truth by standing in your position of being right. That is not love is allowing, that's not unconditional love and that certainly ain't neutrality, I can tell you that. XRP, P, XRP key blinder, interesting avatar name. What do you think about predatory people? They're doing their job. We label them as bad, or you said wicked. You don't get to feel all high and mighty because without having the wicked people around, you don't get to feel better about yourself unless you have somebody below you. Well, I'm... Glad I'm not there. It gives you the contrast. Yes, it gives you a layer of gratitude to say, I'm glad I'm not there anymore. I've said this so many times. But if you didn't have that layer to look at, you wouldn't have the contrast. You wouldn't be able to maybe serve in a layer of gratitude. I say maybe. So everything in this reality, the good, the bad, and the ugly serves a purpose. That is my final answer. That is nature. If you don't want to play anymore, well, then you got to go into the machinations of, hey, I don't want to play anymore. And there's, you know, there's going to be a certain set of requirements for that, requisites for that. I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out, but that's my main focal point here. I, I can't see uh, being, moving into a reality of, oh, it's going to be, you know, people are going to be pushing themselves into the bushes and having fun and unicorns are going to be running around and leprechauns and it's going to be just all hum, you know, hum, you know, this and that and that and that and that. For now, it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, but then you're going to get bored. Well, I need a little bit of a change. I need a little bit of a test. This is too easy. No value there anymore. There's no gratitude anymore because I got everything I need all the time where there's no gratitude there anymore. Well, let's, let's put in a little this and put a little that. Then, then you'll start to see. The quote is, you, if God wants to test a vegan, it'll put him in a room full of carnivores. And vice versa. If God wants to test a carnivore, put him in a room full of vegans. You can, you can take those words out and those titles out and use it for anything you want. Uh, Bot Fantasy says, you mentioned once that people who don't have children break the cycle. Yeah, this the big shout out to uh, Roland from California. What a smart guy this is. I've never met him, but he's a fellow decoder. He's given me a lot of nuggets that I've used. Lights, camera, action came from him. Uh, he's, a, he's a whiz. 
very intelligent guy. He's the one who introduced me to this theory that if you pump out a kid, you leave a seed behind, you will reincarnate. Now, you see, those of you that have children, automatically your mind has starting to wander like, well, what if there's truth to that? You'll start to speculate, ah, oh, damn, am I gonna have to come back? And then those of you that don't wanna come back, you know what you'll do? You'll justify your position and say, no, nah, that's bullshit. So you could you can have the freedom to not have to worry about reincarnating. You see how crazy this life? That's that's life. <laughs> so I'm not saying it's true, but I'm saying is think about the theory here. I don't know where my card went. Oh, there it is. Think about the theory here. You leave a seed behind your genetic makeup. And maybe, just maybe, that is the requisite of you coming back. Guaranteeing your position to come back because you left the seed behind. See, if you, if you stop having, you know, when Roland had told me this, when he had mentioned this to me, suggested it to me, I was like, wow, I don't have kids. And my close friends don't have kids. Huh, maybe there's something to this. So I'm justifying it now, right? Of course, law, you're just justifying it because you have this, I am. But what if it's true for me? So that's, that's, that's all I can say. I mean, I, I occasionally go onto YouTube and I, when I feel pulled, when I feel called, I'll go and I'll, I'll do like a pick a card reading uh, randomly if I like the spread or the layout or if there's a feather on something that draws my attention. So I went on to this just yesterday. I haven't done it in a while. And I, I did, I had this little thing and the lady says, and it was, I was like, I had shivers. So the lady's like, uh, you're going home after this, like, this is why you're kind of meh. And I had resonated with it so much. And I'm like, wow, maybe this is the truth for me that I've been saying this wherever that, wherever that is. But the mark I must leave behind, my job, my fulfillment is to, 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 to do this obligation, to tell the world, man, you're living in a scripted reality. There's no reason to defend your truth. But you, you, that's all you've been doing. Your whole life is defending your position in life. Why, why are you doing it? Habit. So let's, let's touch on this <coughs> child having kids. If you have a child, right? Listen up. If this interests you, like, am I going to come back? Folks, are you a fan of life? I'm a fan of life. Not the suffering part, but I'm a fan of life. I enjoy getting up. I enjoy doing this. I enjoy spending time with all of you. I enjoy making presentations. I enjoy making music. I enjoy tasting food and drinking. I enjoy doing that stuff, but I don't enjoy the suffering. So if you can kind of get over that layer of reality where like, oh, I got to come back again, man, you're, you're not in a state of gratitude. See, if you switch into gratitude, how do you get into gratitude? Shut that damn mainstream off. That, that is like priority number one. Stop watching the mainstream. It's rotting your brain. It's causing nightmares in your life. You live in a state of fear. I don't watch it anymore. I'm so ignorant. This is why I got the Super Bowl wrong, because I didn't look at Taylor Swift and all that stuff. I had no idea. Wasn't he? I don't even watch the games anymore. <laughs> so... Maybe you'll have to come back. But if you're a fan of life, it's not that bad of a deal. Having to come back and live out a life again, maybe next time you come out, you'll, you'll have a better life. You'll have a better code, a better screenplay. Maybe you'll win the Nobel Prize next time. Maybe you'll save the world next time. But if you're sitting here during this lifetime and you're bitching and complaining that my life sucks and it's victim mentality and I got all this trauma and it's your fault and ain't my fault, man, that ain't gratitude, folks. 
I don't know if you'll get reincarnated. I don't know if you have a kid, you'll guarantee a reincarnation. It's a theory. But folks, maybe we all get reincarnated and that is a one plus one equals two fact. Well, I'm ready for that. Like if I get reincarnated, then I'll make the best of that when I get reincarnated. Maybe this is a vacation for spirit. Maybe this is a prison for spirit. So many different ways to look at this. But I'm telling you right now, folks, gratitude is the ultimate emotion. It's a neutral emotion because when you get grateful, you don't have to fall in love with gratitude. Like, to, I, I'll be straight up. You want more transparency? Here it is. Love is the trap. There I said it. Love is the trap of life. final answer that's how much I stand in that statement love is the trap when you love something it's a trap when you fall in love with somebody it is a trap you are trapped now if that person dies you have to have this emotional like you have to go through your mourning that's a nightmare that is a burden. It is a tra- love is a trap, folks. Oh, I oh I love doing this, I, and and it's unavoidable. So I'm not if, hear what I say. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying oh, what do you mean, Logan? Don't love. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just telling you that this reality is based on procreation. It needs people in this reality to experience the reality through. In order to entice you with that, you need to have this emotion called love. Love always wins. It's love. It loves in the air. And I'm going to fall in love and I'm going to do... It's a trap. Because when you fall in love, now you're doing things you don't normally do. And I'm, again, like it's so complicated to try to get this to people. It's very challenging because those of you, some of you may have just fallen in love. Like, oh my God, this is the greatest feeling in the world. It's a trap. So many, uh, uh, name one relationship that you've had that you don't have anymore. And at the, the beginning, it was, oh my God, this is so amazing. Oh, I took him home to meet mom and dad. I've never done that before in my life. And then a year later, you're getting a restraining order and your shit's broken and your furniture's outside and your clothes are all over the driveway. What the hell happened? It's a trap. So if you don't get it, and, and, I, and I'm not saying this because I'm single right now and I've been single. Maybe I will get into a relationship. I don't know. I'm not opposed to it. But I know consciously going in that love is a trap. You, 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 you think any of you that have pets, you get a pet, you become attached, you love it, and then it dies. Just feel that gut, that heart like ripped up wide open. That's what, why do we have to experience that? I know people are going to, they're going to justify it. Well, this is a school, the earth's a school and you got to learn it's karma and it's a, these are all these are all theories, just like my theory here. I'm not saying my theory is true, but it's a trap, man. You get attached. If you don't want to feel heartbreak, don't get into a relationship anymore. Case closed. You don't have to worry about it anymore. But then you feel this pull. Oh my God, I met this person, and they're so amazing. Oh my God, I've never. Oh my, God, I've never felt this way before about anybody. Oh my God, you get all frilicky, man. Oh my God, girl, this this dude is amazing, and blah, blah, blah. oh, she's so hot. It's a trap. The perfect trap, folks. It's all about marketing. Marketing is the trap. Women are a trap. Men are a trap. I mean, if you want to, if you really want to get, I'm going to get authentic and transparent here right now. I'm going to get really, you ladies, you have all the power in this reality. You have it all. The hips, the swinging, the sex, and then you got to know why you wear makeup. See, you'll justify that. Well, I want to I want to look presentable. Show me one girl that has ever been at a nightclub wearing sweatpants, hair up, no makeup on. 
Tell me one instance that has ever happened. Never happened. Go to a nice, fine five-star restaurant. You'll never see a girl in sneakers, sweatpants, a long baggy shirt, and their hair up with no makeup. You will never see that in this reality. Why? Because life's about looking good. Life's about, oh my God, I got, I got to look good because there may be a dude there and I'm ready to, you know, I'm ready to get tanked, get busy with it. Why did women start wearing makeup? Where the hell did that come from? See, the women lure the dudes in. And I'm, I, I, again, late, you ladies here, please don't get offended. I'm just being very raw, very transparent. I'm just saying, I'm saying it like it is. You get your this, you get your, why do you get, have to get your enhancements and your this and get the wrinkles? Because you don't want to look bad. That's the same with the guy, it's just in a different context. But the story of the fallen angels is, is the, this fallen angels is the male looking at the female like, she's hot, I want to go screw her. Well, what if she was in sweatpants, had her hair up with no makeup on? Maybe you would have thought twice. Maybe the fallen angels story would have never happened. Nope. The story is because the girls were hot. They would look good. They looked attractive. Well, maybe girls shouldn't wear makeup and put sweatpants on and go to the club that way. It'd be a completely different reality if that's how it was, but it's not that way. The reason why my final answer is because this game needs players. The women need to lure the men in. They need to look good to do that. That's why guys don't usually wear makeup. And then the guy's going to, and the guy is the, the testosterone. He's going to chase after the estrogen and that's her pheromones. So she's going to enhance the pheromones by putting the makeup on, get all dolled up, put the hair up, look amazing. And a lot of it is false advertising because women, they, they get all dolled up. They don't look like that when they don't ha get all dolled up. It's false advertising. I mean, am I, be, am I wrong here for saying that? I'm just calling it like it is. I'm, and again, I'm having fun. I'm not saying I'm, this is, has to be true for you. You may even give me a thumbs down for this. But I'm just talking about the machinations of how this reality works. And, 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 the, and now you f switch over to the dudes and the dudes are the same way. It's just in a different context. Show me a guy that goes to a club that wears sweatpants and he's got a ball cap on and, you know. It's a lot different for the guys, but five-star restaurants, you don't see a dude just dressed down, not wearing deodorant, Maybe you got some dirt slithered across the arm there. That's, that's not how this, when life's about looking good. I've said this so many times, I'll prove my point. And I don't like to even use the word proof. The next time you go to the dentist, I will guarantee you that you will brush your teeth and you will floss before you go to the dentist. I will guarantee my life on it, you will. Why? Because you can't sit in the dentist's chair and you open up your mouth and the dentist is like, what the hell? Damn. Do you floss? Your teeth are the cleanest they've ever been on the day you go to the dentist. Why? Because you can't sit in the dentist's chair and have them judge you because you can't look bad. That is absolute proof that mankind is all about looking good. Not women, it just, it's men and women. This reality is a comical joke to me. I'm a fan of it. I'm a fan of people. I, res I look at people's, I'm a, like, when I do a reading for somebody, like, I'm like, man, you never realize what you got. Like, it's amazing. But then I look at life, like, the, the, the way this, the, the whole reality works, it's just, it's all testosterone and estrogen. It's all everybody chasing after everybody to have sex and pump out kids and have a family and buy a car and get a mortgage. And it's like, what's up, Lena? Yeah, there, there is this, this trans this um it just depends on your 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 the makeup of who you are you know and why this whole trend is happening but i i again i i let's just let's be like i i hope that everybody's here being honest and transparent to themselves male or female you women have all the power i already i, I can admit that as a dude 
But I can tell you right now, guys are not scrolling on Tinder or Instagram and they're looking at chicks in sweatpants with their hair up with no makeup. They're not doing that. Sorry. That ain't happened. There isn't even a channel for that. And you, and I can guarantee you there ain't women looking through Tinder, swiping and looking in whatever Instagram. They're looking for dudes that have no job and they're broke and they got teeth missing and shit like that. You don't have channels like that unless it's a comedy channel. No, if you put your, this, if you put yourself on the market, like look at how, this is how programmed we are as a, as a species. You're in a relationship, you're in a marriage. You let yourself go, meaning you gain, you gain like 20 pounds, you get a little lazy, you know, face is a little more fuller, haven't been working out. And then you get out of that relationship. I've seen this so many times. You get out of that relationship and what's the first thing that you're doing? Got to get back to the gym. Got to look good. Got to get my peels. Got to get, you know, got to, got to do this. Got to get, got to get my hair. Got to get my hair blown out. I got, you know, I'm, I'm going back on Tinder. I'm going to go I'm gonna put myself back on the market. The guy, the guy, I got to get back into the gym. I got to take some juice. I got whatever. You weren't doing that before in the relationship. Why are you doing it now? Because you're ready to lure in your next mate. You're now ready to play the game again. And if that ain't support for life's about looking good, I don't know what is. I mean, it's just so blatant. That's how this reality works. <clears throat> Guys will get all like, got to get ripped up. I mean, I, when I used to go to Vegas back in the day, I used to party back 1999, 2000, and the pool parties and Dre's came out and the, the night after I was in the pool parties came out. Man, amazing, like sick. Some of the, the, the best times I've ever had in my life. How many beautiful people were there? Well, it was just so funny. The joke was, is that, you know, I've been living in Los Angeles. The joke was that the dudes are getting ready for the pool party. You'll do this when you go on vacation. Got to get that vacation body. Why do you have to get a vacation? But you're going on vacation because you got to go sit in front of people that you don't know and they're going to judge you if you look like shit. Got to get that bathing suit body. We've done it. Guys and girls alike, We it, this is the, the joke with Vegas is that the dudes would, especially the guys, they would, they would juice up, they would do this, they get, they would look extraordinary amazing. Because, why? Because you want to look good and you're going to get screwed. You want to lure in the women. So you got to look fit and buff. And so it's like you have this prep time. It's like you're doing a contest and you're not even going to a contest. You're going to a freaking pool party. <laughs> I mean, you're not even going to compete. You're just going to a freaking pool party for a weekend and you're getting all decked out. You're going shopping. You're buying new clothes. Like what? <laughs> this is why people have too many clothes. Yada, yada, yada. Anyway, I'm, I'm kind of ranting. It's just kind of funny, man. Woo, all right. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I, I, I really, I have a lot of stand-up comedy pieces that <clears throat> I would love to do on the world stage, but. So Forbidden says, the older I get, the less I care what others think. <clears throat> Love my casual pants and runners and my hair. I bet you're single, Forbidden. Are you single? Be honest now. If you're not, that's totally fine. But I bet you're single. But be honest. Don't be like, no, I'm, I'm taken. It's just so crazy, especially like, like you, you, you're in a relationship and you let yourself go. You get comfortable. That's false advertising. It's like you show up at a club or a bar or a get together or a gathering and you're this pristine, amazing looking person. Like you're just at your, you're like to the 10. You're looking for love. You're looking to screw. You're looking to hump. You're looking to create a family. I want to have a family. I want to have kids. You got to look your best. 
And then when you get into the relationship, you let yourself go. How's that fair? And you know what you'll do? You will justify why you did it. And again, I'm not saying you're wrong, but you will justify why you let yourself go. Now I get there's some handy, like I broke my leg or, or I did this or that. Okay, I, fine, I get that. But is your leg broken the whole time? Like, folks, I have a lot of injuries. I still go up and I go to the gym. I push through. But I know I'm not you and you're not me. And I know, oh, that's juicy. Oh, that's good for you, Logan. But that's not my code. And again, I know your code is the only code that matters. But I'm simply pointing out the obvious of how this whole reality works. I think it's just so funny. <clears throat> so funny. But I think there's a lot of false advertising out there. You get into a relationship, you're looking to the 10, and then you let yourself go. And I, I personally can tell you, right? I know it's, and I know people say, oh, you're so shallow, Logan, because you're all about, no. Well, why did you look good in the beginning then? Stop trying to deflect here. The point is that you were to the 10 when I met you, and then you let yourself go, and now I'm being shallow? Well, why did you let yourself go? You looked, as, you, when I looked, when I picked you up, we hooked up. You looked a certain way. Why you? Why can't you? I mean, you can't stay that way. I know that going through life because you age. But if you let yourself go, there's a lot of relationships that end up breaking up because of that. And that's not my opinion. That's a fact. <clears throat> Sun gazing lioness is saying, "Are you choosing to be single or ready?" I'm not choosing anything. I don't get to choose my life. I want to think that I am choosing it, but I know I'm not. I'm having the most fun of my life. I have, I have, it's just me, right? And then my responsibilities in my life. But I don't, I, I, again, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm playing God. How do I do that? I go out and feed the, the strays. And that, that's, like, that, that's like, that would be the equivalent to having a, a, a partner. Because I get to go do that. I get to go go out there. Like when I was in Colombia, I would go to the park and I would feed the pigeons. That's what I would do. And I would, they would land on, it was amazing. Amazing experience. So I'm not choosing anything. I'm simply along for the ride. I'm having the most fun with this ride that I've been given. And whatever comes my way, I'm, I'm open to things. That's it. That's, that's kind of my final answer for this. <laughs> I farted in the first date to clear the air. <laughs> that's funny. Shams asking, uh, what do you think the significance of the Sirius star in worldwide? I, I think Sirius has a shitload of merit in this reality. It just may, I, I talked about this earlier. When you see this, that means Sirius. Sirius. So it has a ton of merit. It's the brightest star in the night sky for good reason. Bot Fantasy says, if this is a movie, who's watching us? I have a lot of ideas and theories, but I can't give you an absolute on that. It would just come down to an opinion on what you're going to agree with. You may not agree with any of my theories.
Yeah, I missed the pigeons. The last few days that I went out there, I literally, I took a video of it. I should probably share it with all of you. But I, as I'm walking into the park, uh, I, I walked in and there was this one amazing, like this brown pigeon and it flew up on the fence and it literally knew I was coming into the park because I would visit it regularly when I was there for a couple months. <clears throat> and then as I'm walking to the bench that I always sit on, that's the only bench in the sun that nobody goes in because it's the sun and I'm like, oh, I'll take that. They're they all coming over. They're flying by my head. They're laying on the ground and they're just coming up to me like this flock of pigeons coming up to me waiting for their food. And it was all, it was amazing. It was absolutely just glorious. That's what I get off on. Because I get to play God. Like I get to feed them. I just made their day that much easier. And they appreciated it. And they would, they, I literally had them landing on my hand and multiple ones on my hand. Like, and they fight. So it was amazing. <clears throat> so everybody out there, if you're feeding strays and feeding, like if you're feeding, like I'm feeding ants and like, why am I doing that? Cause I'm like, they want food. It's cool to watch the ants. I'm like, I playing God, right? It's just, why not? Thoughts on methylene blue supplement? I don't, I haven't heard of that. Joe says, so Logan, are Colombian women like those YouTube videos of Colombian women riding horses in slow motion? Colombian women are absolutely beautiful. I will say that. I will definitely say that. They, they are absolutely beautiful um, for me. You know, my, my take and my, my like, uh, they have the, the very dark eyebrows. I'm a fan of like eyebrows, like not, not the, the, the stenciled in ones, but the, you know, the, these, these women have the real, like very distinct, not every, all of them, but yeah, but they're, they're really pretty. For sure. But it's just so funny, man. People ask me, like, what, what happened over there? Like, I got no game, man. Like, I, I've, been, I've been single since 2018. And, and on top of that, I was a shy kid growing up. I, I probably would have had a lot more notches in my belt if I was a little bit more extrovert. And then you would say, oh, Logan, you're not introvert. When I was growing up, man, shh, you have no idea. Like, I was the quiet, and I still... Like in Colombia, when I was there, man, I it was just paying attention to myself. Yeah, okay, you would look around and say, well, that person's attractive. But for me to go up and say, oh my God, it, that's not my mojo. <laughs> I would, I, for me, it was, I need a few drinks, maybe a little bit of Molly. I'm in the club, you know, to get the balls to go up. And that's, that's how it was for me. I mean, I'm just being raw and real, you know. So for me, it was like, it's fun looking and watching, but to, to actually <clears throat> take, take the initiative is a different story. Yeah, Sofia Vargara, it was from the play. I was in Barranquilla. That's where Sofia Vargara, and they have this big statue of, uh, uh, what the hell's her name? I can't remember her name, but another big singer. Yeah, eyebrow thread. I mean, I just, I've always, I don't know. I just, I like like the eyebrows. I've always been a fan of just the bam, you know? I just think it's just really cool. So, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm, I'm like, wow, that chick's pretty hot. And, but I'm like, I got no game. <laughs> That's my mind. And I'm just like, like my main focus is on pigeons. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's just Shakira. Thank you, Brian Donovan. Yeah, they, they have a big Barranquilla, which I would encourage all of you to uh, listen. If you can get to Barranquilla, <clears throat> super inexpensive for lodging Airbnb, 
amazing city. Ama it's like a modern, I was right in, it's amazing. Uh, and then two hours south and you go, I went out to Cartagena, amazing city there, more cultural based. But just Colombia is just, I really love that country. It's just amazing. The weather was amazing. I mean, right now, carnival's going on. I left on January 30th and that weekend, this weekend, it's party central there. They have their carnival. <clears throat> Sundancer says, you're Mars in Sag. Yeah, it's at zero degrees Sag. But believe you me, uh, you know, I have gate 59 in human design activated, which is the gate of intimacy. So trust me, even though I was somebody who was shy and, oh, I had plenty of fun times in my life. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not going to dance around that. Sun gazing Linus, Logan, what are your thoughts on the majority of Hollywood being inverts in vitro? I, I don't, I don't know too much. I'm ignorant in that area. I don't know. Did I feel safe? Absolutely. Very safe. Uh, Barranquilla is, a, is the most upscale part of Colombia. You have Medellin and Bogota and Cartagena. Uh, but Barranquilla, which is all the way up north, is was super safe where I was. I mean, it was is more of the upscale part, and I'm not saying because you know of what, like it is the more upscale part, but it's, it's so inexpensive. But they do have parts that are pretty you know shady, obviously. If when you go down the southern part of Barranquilla, Cartagena was like the if you stay in the walled city, absolutely amazing. I stayed down at the beach, very inexpensive, very inexpensive, uh, very reasonable. And uh, they have the, the, the produce in Colombia is amazing because you can grow everything year round there. So if you get to Cartagena, man, it is a amazing cultural city. Like it's, a, it's, it's amazing for sure. Melanie says, I have gate 59 too, but I put the energy into creating art and feeding animals. Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, this, this, this is an interesting way to kind of discuss what season are you in, in your life? If you take the average lifespan of about 83 years, 85, I think, I think Hong Kong has the high, I don't know how it's even possible. They do smoke ass shit later, but uh, Hong Kong supposedly has the highest average lifespan, 85, I think for women. But what I like to do is if you take 80, the average lifespan, and you break that into four quarters, the four seasons, when's your springtime? When you're a baby until you're about 20, 21. Then now you're a young adult. Now you got it all figured out. Now you're a know-it-all. Now you don't need anybody to tell you what to do. Oh, I'm tired of you telling me what to do. I'm going to go do what I'm doing. Yeah, because you're moving into your summertime. So from zero to 20, 21, that's your springtime. You're a little spring chicken. You need to be taught the ways. You need to be told what to do. And then you move in from 21... To, the, to summertime and then the other 20 year 20, 20, 20, 21 to about 40, 41, 42 you're in your summertime now it's time to get crazy take your clothes off party get nuts go crazy do drugs drink a lot whatever party, party, party <clears throat> summertime that's what people do in summertime oh my god so let's go to the let's go to the river let's get crazy let's do let's do a menage a trois let's do you know they get crazy summertime and then you move into the third part of your life, the third stage, where's, which is where I'm at. I'm in my fall stage. Your fall is around 42, 43, up to about 60, 62. I'm in my fall time. Fall's different. Got to get serious with life. Got to get a mortgage. You got to get a family. Got to have kids. Got to have a business. Got to be a CEO. Got to do this. Got to gotta get a 401k. Got to get stocks. Got to get crypto. You get more serious about life. You get more, you refine yourself. Like It's like a bottle. That wine I got is amazing. It's a refinement. See, when you're in your spring or summer, you're not looking to refine yourself. You're immortal. You don't care if you drink all weekend and get up and like, oh my God, I'm a little hungover, but I'm going to go do it again this weekend. 
You don't really do that in the fall time of your life between 40 and 60, 65. No, you, you're like, yeah, well, I'll have one, maybe two glasses. That's, that's it for me. That's my limit. No, I'm not going to go to Vegas and drop Molly all weekend. No, I'm not going to do that. That's <laughs> what I used to do in my summertime. I'm in my fall time. I ain't doing that. And then you go into your winter time, the final stage of your life. And now you're really refined. This is where you get to reach that spirituality stage where you're like, okay, well, there's something to this, you know, and you start to study and you start to look at reality in a much different lens. You become wiser. You spend a lot of time within you. What do you do in the wintertime? If it's cold, you go within contraction. Spring and summer is expansion. Take your clothes off. It's warm. My skin, it's like moist and I feel good. And then that's expansion. But that's, that's wax off or wax on. And then the, the fall and the winter is like wax off. You've done all the luster. Now it's like, okay, I'm ready to alleviate the wax off. Wax on is like spring and summer. Woo! But then wax off is like, okay, I've been there, done that. So what stage are you in in your life? I'm in my fall season. It's a much different season than my summer. My summer, I went crazy during my summer season. For sure, I did. My spring was very restricted. Very restricted. And then my summer, I was like, oh, I'm out of the cage. Woo, I'm going to make up for lost time. So, yeah, Bobby says, I miss those days. Let me tell you, I get the itch sometimes, Bobby. I will, I wear headphones a lot of time. I got my, it's just me and my computer. I'll put on some music and it'll be some house music probably. Like I'm a rocker, but man, during the late 90s, 2000, 2005, man, I was in Vegas every weekend, partying, dropping Molly, doing K, doing whatever. Having a great time, the greatest times of my life. Those were absolute bliss. And I don't regret any of it at all, nothing. It was, um, it was a ride that I got on that I was like, I don't want this ride to end. It was amazing. So I miss them too. I put, I'll put on some music and it'll remind me and I'll, I'll get this itch. Like, oh my God, maybe I should go to Vegas one more time. <laughs> and I still get it. I came up with this idea of, of that. I come up with all these crazy ideas. Anyway, I don't want to go too far off topic, but... <clears throat> Claire says, done the house and kids, nest is empty and home gone, back to raising the pentacles and seeking the sun. Yeah, you know what my idea of, of bliss is now? Having, a, uh, having a, a place, a tropical place with a backyard where I can grow watermelons and vegetables. Having a green thumb. Appreciating nature and beauty. Just surviving with the absolute least amount of resistance. That's my idea of dream on. <laughs> Greg says, I don't think they put all that GMO crap in the food in Colombia. No, in Colombia, it is bliss. You can go there for 90 days, by the way. If you want to go to Colombia, you can go there for nine. They'll give you a 90 day automatic when you go into the country stamped on your passport. <clears throat> it's amazing. Barranquilla is amazing. I'm going to go back. And the 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 health, that, like the dental there, I had some five star five star so Jason says some people in the chat talking about Lucifer like they know him 
let me ask you this. Have you ever worked with him? No. Till you have, you have no idea who Lucifer is, only what you have read. That may not be true for you. If you're reading that statement, you'd be like, no, no, I know who he is. Okay, but Jason does have a point. Is there, real, is there a real entity running around that you can't see named Lucifer? Some of you will go back to your program beliefs of like, yep, in the Bible it's a, so now you're, so we're gonna use that. Is that what you wanna use? Okay, if that's what works for you, then that's your truth. Remember, that's your screenplay. You don't need to defend it. But please don't dismiss somebody else's truth by saying, no, that's not the way it is. No, it's not the way it is for you. So you would say, well, I don't see it that way. Okay, cool. You do you, let me do me. It's kind of like, I don't know what it feels like to be pregnant. I don't know what it feels like to have a kid. I never will. So I just, I, I could say, well, yeah, I mean, but I just don't know. So unless you have, like Jason here has said, he has worked with the entity named Lucifer. And so you, is your, if your mind is like, oh my God, this dude's bad dude, you've automatically put yourself in a box. The way to free yourself is you're like, that's pretty interesting. Tell me a little bit more about that. But some of you be like, oh, no, 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 don't, don't do that. No, don't do that. That's going against the fabric of your programming. And I'm not here to change your mind. I'm not here to twist your arm, change your mind. But I'm simply giving you some things to think about. So if somebody works with an energy and says, I've worked with this energy, I know what it's all about. And then you've never done that, but then you've read in a book and the book says, well, the book says this is the devil and this is, okay, well, that, that, that's what works for you, great. You're right in your instance right there, but you're not, you're not sharing foundations. And I honestly, like I've never worked with, like people say, well, I, have you worked with it? No, haven't. I haven't worked, with, to be honest with you, I haven't worked with any of the energies. The energy's working with me. It's using me, whatever that is. <clears throat> Jason, Jason, does he wear Prada? <laughs> That's funny. That's pretty funny. I, 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 since we're talking about this, let me, let me share something with all of you that are, those of you that are completely in fear of that word Lucifer. All right. I just, just, I just want you to think about something. I'm not t telling you that this is true, but I, I want you to consider what I'm about to tell you. There is no Lucifer in the Bible. There is, there is not one version, not one version of any Bible out of the countless Bibles that has the word Lucifer in it. Not one. The original text of where it came from, I, the only mention of it that correlates to which you've been programmed to adopt as your truth is Isaiah 14 verses 12. That is the, that is the only, that's the closest you're going to get because that spelling is in Hebrew, because Lucifer is a English word derived from, and the research I got is from Latin. The only word that you can say that is true in Isaiah 14 verses 12 is four letters, and that is H-Y-L-L. -L. That's as close as you're going to get to Lucifer. The story of Lucifer is a story that was designed of, from an origin that you cannot verify. And again, I'm not saying it's true. I don't want you to agree with me. 
But let's just be authentic and really transparent here. There is no way for you to verify with absolute one plus one equals two truth of where the origin of that word came from in the English. In the Hebrew, yeah, it's the Old Testament. Now, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, what book is it? Isaiah. Isaiah is the 23rd book in the Bible, which is exactly where Isaiah 14 verses 12 comes from. The 23rd book of the Bible, what does that have to do with our reality? Well, Yahweh equals 23. So you have the God of the Bible and one of the most popular pronunciations of it. That can be, that is a Y-H-W-H. That is a conversion that is absolutely true. That is a, because H-Y-L-L is, there's not even any of those correlating to L-U-S, L-U-C-I-F-E-R. It's not even the same. The only thing you get is the L in there. You have one letter in the English from the original Hebrew. But in the yod heh vah you have for all the letters that correlate it to it. Y-H-W-H, Yahweh, the most popular pronunciation of the God of the Bible, is the creator of the Bible. And it is in Isaiah 45, verse 7, where it says, I, Yahweh, make peace and create evil. I create light and darkness. I make peace and I create evil. What does that mean? So if you just alleviate these demons and all that stuff, and again, I'm not saying they're not true, they don't have merit, but let's talk about the facts here. What does it say in Isaiah 45 verses 7? I make peace and create evil. That's what I'm concerned with. And when you correlate that to being the 23rd book of the Bible and Yahweh equals 23, it's very obvious the connections there are absolute. There is no trying to like, well, let's dance around this. No, I can't be. No, it is that. H-Y-L-L is not even close to being L-U-C-I-F-E-R. So there's that. But I'm not here to twist your arm. I'm not here to tell you that you're wrong in your beliefs. And I, I already know that those of you that believe that that is like the, the devil and stuff, that is because you are afraid of releasing that programming. You're not choosing to believe that because you're standing up in your gratitude and your loving life and like, I love life and so I know that's the, the enemy. In the, I've, you're doing it because you're afraid of acknowledging that maybe that's not true. That's what you're doing. You're afraid that you're going to get it wrong and you'll be punished for it. That's why fear is the most desired energy for how this reality works. It ain't love, it's fear that gets the most energy. It, it's what promulgates you in this realm. I will bet anybody here, anybody, your biggest fear in your life is, is what promulgates you to create your reality. Why do you think I'm here doing decode your reality? What did I do? How was I raised? I was raised in the strict, one of the strictest religions there was. JW organization, which I don't regret at all. The restriction promulgated me to come out here and say, hey man, I want to be free. I don't want all this restriction. I want to be free. I'm not alleviating my burdens of ethics and morals. I'm still a good person. I'm out there feeding, I'm doing, but I'm, I'm, my promulgation is, is derived from my foundation of, I was, I was really restricted. And now I'm not, I'm going to show people that restriction is a false narrative. My position. <clears throat> So let's just keep it all loving here. I don't, I'm, I'm not looking at a lot of the comments. Uh, I do see some people trying to be right. A lot of you are here to be right.
Michael says your natal chart is, is it also a script? Yes. If any of you have a car, if any of you own a car, inside the glove box, more than likely, is an owner's manual. That owner's manual is the operating manual for the car that you drive. I would bet that if something, if your car breaks down, the first thing that you'll grab is the owner's manual in the glove box, trying to figure out what the hell's going on with this car. Well, the astrological chart, numerology, these blueprints are the makeup of who you are. Now, I'm not saying to follow them. A lot of liberation is just being the observer, realizing that you're know, like Mars is hungry. Like start looking at these celestials that like Mars is your drive in life. That's why it's in the first house and it's tied to the, the rising sign in Aries. Why is Aries known as the first sign? Because Aries is fire. You forge the fires. And what is the ruler of Aries? Mars. Why, why wouldn't it be Venus? Because masculinity, all of you have, testosterone, is your drive in life. So Mars attached to the rising of the sun. The sun uses Mars to attack reality. The masculine portion of the sun would be through Mars. Mars is like, let's go do this. Yes, let's go do this. That's why when you start to read astrological charts, you see the Mars placement and there's this drive. That's why the rising sign has a lot to do with, you know, the placements and, and astrological charts. But lo and behold, these energies, I feel personally, they use you, they siphon energy off of you. So when you get good at this reality, and this is why people say, what sign are you? I'm all 12. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm all 12 signs. You are? How, how can you be all 12? Because I have all 12 houses. Hello, where have you been? You've been so programmed to focus on what's your sun sign? What's your rising sign? I'm all 12. I'm a little bit of this, a little bit of that, I have a little more of that. I have a lot more of that, but I'm, I'm all 12. When you become all 12, you now have kind of circumvented it where like, don't try to be using me for that. Like if you have Mars and Aries, you're probably a fire, you're probably a firehead, a firecracker. Are you just gonna say, well, that's just my code. No, you would, to, you, you would look at that and if someone starts to push your buttons, when you get good and refined, maybe when you're in the fall or winter stage, you'd be like, in my summertime, I'm just going to punch you in the face. I'm going to take you out. When you get in your fall time, you're like, well, last time I did that, I got my ass kicked. And then in your winter time, you're like, I can't even, I'll get, I'll get crushed. So I'm just going to be quiet. That, those are the stages of life. So when you get good at astrology, you look at your chart, you'll start to see that it's harnessing it. It's harvesting your energy. And you're like, uh, I think I'll just kick back this time around. Astrology says it all, folks. You know, let me let me let me see if I can get a a chart here. <clears throat> uh, see if I can get a chart. This is the side of the Super Bowl open. Let me um, let's do the let me look at the um, <clears throat> this the total eclipse coming up. I don't even know what time. I can't remember what the eclipse time is. I think it's, let me see what time the total eclipse is. So I can get exacts. 127 central daylight time. <clears throat> okay. So one. Twenty seven. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so let's go to some astrology. All right, here we go. Okay. So let me make my cursor bigger. Hold on. Um, all right, maybe not. Okay. So this is the April 8th, the total eclipse of the heart going over Texas um, and 
you could see the cluster of energy here. You could see the sun is literally right on top or the or moon is right on top. The sun is at 25 degrees. The moon is at 26 degrees. Mercury is right there as well in zero degrees Aries. I mean, these are all squished together. Uh, you also have Rahu here, which has been sitting in the 27th nakshatra, which is the, um, the nakshatra of spirituality. And Rahu is like, just wants to desire things and it comes into a nakshatra of spirituality that doesn't know what to do. Because it just wants to have fun, man. It's in its summertime all the time, you know? So it's, it's just really fun. It's all in, all in Pisces here. But what I wanted to point out here is that this, this layer uh, of Aries is right now you have the father. Um, you have, I'm um, sorry, you have the grandfather and the, the grandson. You have Uranus and Jupiter here right next to one another. They're at uh, 24 degrees and 26 degrees. So they're literally hanging out, having a beer, having a cocktail, having a shot of whiskey. This is exactly where Jupiter was during the foundation of the Society of Jesus uh, in 1540. This, if, if you have, if you got Venus or Mars here, <laughs> you're a freak in the bedroom. Now, it may not be for everybody, but I'm just saying is that if you got any energy here in Barani, which is tied to Yama, the god of the underworld, and Aries, you got a high, you probably have a high sex drive and you probably are a little freaky, right? This energy here. Not with Jupiter, but if you got Venus or Mars there. If you got Venus there and you're a female, you're probably that freako in the bedroom. It's the, it's the celestials working you like like a puppet on strings but the, this is the energy that we're dealing with from the celestial point of view and your reaction is going to give off your emotional responses and that feeds this is a machine feed the machine and yes it can be tied to the archons if you want to shake it that way but this is the stargate above this is the great beast above the 12 apostles and the Christ this is all tied to that harvesting energy and it never stops. But this, you can look at the cluster of energy here on this solar eclipse. I mean, you got Neptune, Poseidon running the waters down here. You got Venus, which is the Ankh. You have Rahu, which is the desires of life. You have the sun, which is the spirit of life. You have Mercury, which is the messenger of life. And you have the moon, which is the emotional side of life. All stuck inside, I mean, besides Mercury, Mercury's at zero degrees, but they're all crunched together in the sign of Pisces. Now this house, forget about the house because this, exa this is exactly at uh, 1.37 p.m. So this is during the time of the eclipse. But look at all this energy. It'll stay in the sign no matter if it moves to 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. It's all in the sign of Pisces which is the 12th sign which is the, the, the mystic. So there's a lot of spirituality here, man. I mean, I, you can see like even the story of the raptures in here. If you're, if you're somebody who believes in that, that's in here. <laughs> There's, there's so much to this. And, you know, you have across the way in Virgo, you have K2. And it's in the 13th Nashakshra Kosta. And this is with the hands, but this is the death card. Th this, 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 um, this line right here, this combination, this, this Pisces and Virgo, 6 and 12 is the 126. It's the 18. It's, it's Jesus was born of a virgin. He was uh, a, a fisher of men. Doesn't, ha doesn't, doesn't mean that he was born during the Virgo season, but I have it pegged around uh, May or June. So that's like more um, Cancer and Virgo. I mean, Cancer and uh, Gemini. But if you if you do the leap year, it would be it would be Aries energy here. But that's for a different story. But all this cluster of energy right here, whoo, that's a lot. You got Mars right on top of Saturn. Mars is the drive. This energy here. And let's not leave out Plutos. Plutos is in Capricorn. It will be here till 2039. 
It will bridge into Aquarius if you're a fan of tropical. I'll be like, no, it's in, in, it's in Aquarius. It will bridge into Aquarius, yes. These, these signs, they, they co-mingle. So this is Vedic sidereal, but why Pluto and Capricorn? Because its job is to remove the earth, to remove things on the earth. See, if it was, in, if it was strictly in, in Aquarius, you're talking about the removal of technology or disruption in technology. But you have the disruption in fiat currency. Capricorn is money. So you have the, the disruption of money here. That's why you had leave the world behind. This, this entire Super Bowl is based on the disruption of the money system, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully that helped you out a little bit. Um, where the hell's my screens here? Screen's all screwed up. Okay. Uh, M. Douglas says, I'd say April 1st. I think you're, are you talking about New Year's? So let's talk about, let, let's talk about the four points of the sun, which is the equinoxes and the solstices. That's the cross, that's the four points. Where are you going to get your cross from? During the summer months in the Tropic of Cancer, if you're in Europe or if you're in Maine or if you live in Florida or if you live in California, your summertime is the winter time in Australia. These are called the solstices, the points that are opposite one another. So when the sun is, let's say July or August, and you're living in New York, the sun is going to make an arc that is closer to that layer of Tropic of Cancer. That's why you have longer days of sunshine. And in the Tropic of Capricorn, you have more of the night. That is the birthing of the sun through the solstices on that trajectory. Then you have the spring and fall equinoxes where the sun is directly overhead of the equator that separates the tropics. I was just there. I went to Panama. I flew from Barranquilla to Panama, which was my connecting city. And then, which is a cool airport, by the way. Panama is a pretty badass airport. And then to Cancun. So Panama is like right there on the equator. Well, during the spring and fall equinoxes, which is the spring equinox and the fall equinox is where the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, they both get equal days of light and darkness because the sun is in the very middle of both tropics. So as it's making its pendulum zigzag shape, that's what it does. Every tropic, each tropic is getting uh, the, the same amount of daylight and same amount of nighttime for the majority of them, depending on your latitude. So what is the tropic, I'm sorry, what is the equinox for the springtime? It is going to be around March 20th. March 21st, March 22nd. What is March 22nd? 322. Well, do you guys and gals know what the 322 is? Oh, that's the skull and bones. Why is the skull and bones tied to the spring equinox? Uh, huh. I'll let you figure that out. I know why, but I'm not going to share that information. You go do some research on it. Before you get your little, you know, panties or underwear in a bunch. Oh, it's the 322 skull and buzz and they're this and it's Yale and it. go study it. And then you have in the fall equinox that is going to be around September 20th, September 21st, September 22nd, September 23rd when the sun again is evenly over the equator giving the light to both sides. And that is what I am mainly interested in because the fall time is the harvest time and the day on the calendar for September 22nd, 23rd is 267 slash 268 slash 269. Why the 267 is a big standout? Because the scripture in Revelation 3 verses 16 
the numerology of his 267. What does the scripture in Revelation 3 verses 16 talk about? Being lukewarm. What is lukewarm? Being neutral. It says right in that scripture, because you are not hot or cold, because you are not yin yang, because you are not peace or evil, because you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of thy mouth. Well, the interpretation from the church is like, you don't want to get spit out of the mouth. Yeah, of course you don't want to because the game needs players. The church's job is to keep you here. I, I don't know, you. how can you not see that? The, the job, the responsibility, and again, you, it's not wrong. <laughs> the responsibility of the church is to give you an adversary so you pick a side. And it's doing a great job. It has done a great job. But when you can take a step back and you be like, wait a minute, hold on a second. Both sides are two sides of the same coin. Well, then now what are you going to do with that information? Well, now you go into the fall equinox where the sun is directly overhead of the equator. And you can see the good on this side and you can see the evil on this side. And you'd be like, oh, wait a minute, man. They're feeding off one. They're, they, you can't have one without the other. Wait a minute. Oh, you got me. Not anymore. So lukewarm, the inter to me now, the interpretation means that when you become aware that the peace and evil are one in the same, Isaiah 45, verse 7, the Lord says, I create peace and make evil, or make peace and create evil. I do both. Okay, let's, that's the foundation now. we got to stick with foundations. When you look at Isaiah 45, verse 7, it's specifically, there's no room to get this wrong, to, get, to miss the mark here. I make peace and create evil. I do both the yin yang. And then you go into Revelation 3 verses 16 where it says, because you are not hot or cold, because you are not peace or evil, because you are lukewarm, you're out of here. You can't be a player in the game if you're not going to be a cop or you're not going to be a bad guy. Which one is it? I watch a lot of cop shows. I watch a lot of, I love it. I do. Because I have, I, have, I have a lot of influence on my, my chart. But I, when I watch it, I watch it for education. I know that it's a show. I know it's not real. There are real people acting it out. There are real directors and producers. But I know it's a show, just like this is a show. This is a movie. It's no different than the damn show you're watching on television. But you get all excited. You get all emotional about the, the show, and it's not even real. And you do the same thing in this reality, like, oh, you're wrong, and, you're, and you're, you're doing the same thing. It's like, how do you get out of that mess? Step back. Hold on a second. Step back and become Wusa. You ever see that movie, Bad Boys? I love Martin Lawrence. Wusa. <laughs> Wusa. Like, dude, it's funny, man. They become Wusa. Calm. You don't want to play anymore? Some of you don't want to play anymore. Is there even such a way to escape this reality? Maybe. And I, I, I'm on the search for it. I'm on the hunt for it, as many of you are. And I think that the requisite is you, you, you've got to be a nihilist. And a nihilist is like all the programming I was raised with, I'm done with it. Like, I, okay, so we had... We had <clears throat> Jason in here, who I'm a fan of his life. Like he says he works with Lucifer. I don't. So is he wrong? Well, if you're a church goer, you're like, oh my God, that's evil. That's bad. Not for him. It's not. Oh, I know, but I got it right. And you're, now you're, now you're trying to be right. <laughs> you're now, you're now partaking in the game of life. So if you just do you, if you're like, okay, well, I'm not going to take part. Okay, great. But he is. So what, are you going to say he's wrong? Yeah, he's wrong. He's, he's absolutely wrong because God says, no, you're regurgitating what you were told. I just, let's just create the foundation here. That's just the way it is, man. So for me as a nihilist is that I look at the foundation, I look at all the, 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 the layers of this reality, of the matrix, this moving part and that moving part and this bottle of water and this pair of glasses and this cell phone and this deck of cards and 
They want, it's so enticing. Like, come, come out and play. Twisted Sister had the album, come out and play. Come out and play. Come on, you, you want to play? Let's play. And you get to a point in your life, you're like, eh. So it's so like, for me, like, I, I don't watch the mainstream because I don't want to play that anymore. I'm not interested in that. I don't give a shit if they're going to do this with the food or they're going to create this in the bunkers. I don't care. I'm not interested in that. But Logan, don't you? No, I don't. I don't. I don't care. But that's me. That's my code. I'm not telling you that you need. I don't want you to follow my way of life. Just consider what I'm saying. That's it. But nihilism, ladies and gentlemen, is removing all of your preconceived notions, all of your programming. And when you do that, like getting a lobotomy, a lot of you need to get a lobotomy. <laughs> you, imagine you, you get an amnesia. You don't remember a damn thing. A lot of you, that would be complete therapy for you. And then you just go out to the, I go to the beach tomorrow and I don't have, I don't remember shit. Don't know who my mom and dad is, my brother. I don't know anything. Oh my God, what a blessing. Now I go to the beach. I sit on the beach and I'm like, oh my God, look at that bird flying over there. Oh my God, that's cool. Look at that pelican. Look at the fish. Oh my God, the water's so clear. It's so beautiful. I'm not thinking about, oh, they're going to do this in the world. So, oh my God, the, the UN's do this and they're the blood and the shot and like, dude. And then, and then what's the, uh, God, but God's, God's going to step in. God's controlling all this shit. H how can you not see that? Oh no, God's allowing it to happen. Okay, so God's allowing it to happen. Would you allow it to happen? You see, how far do we want to go with this philosophically? If, like, if you're a parent, I've said this so many times, if you're a parent and you have a kid and you get a phone call and the hospital's on the line, hey, uh, Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so, your son's been in a really bad accident, your daughter's been in a really bad accident, you better come here, they're on life support. Would you just be like, oh, just call me tomorrow? Not, not really. Would you do that? No, that's absurd. You would be, you'd be speeding 100 miles an hour to get to the hospital. You're an imperfect, you're not even a perfect human being. You're not even a supernatural. You're a, you're a human being having a human experience. I know you have a spirit inside of you, but then you're racing to the hospital because your child is on life support. Do you see anything coming to your rescue? Many of you right now are on life support. You're mentally on life support. You're physically on life support. Is anybody coming to your rescue? Do you, have you ever seen that in the fabric of our history, the chronology of anybody coming to your rescue? And I know you don't. Some people, some of you that are the churchgoers and theology, you're going to, you will justify, well, it's because it's not time. R exactly. It's not. So all of this is being allowed to happen. And ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you, man, it's God is unconditional love. Your idea of God is uncond unconditional meaning when God looks down at this reality, it owns it all. It's a monopoly. And it ain't coming to save you like you're going to go save your child from life support. Because it could instantly and automatically end all the suffering in the world. Why is it not happening? People, and then you're going to get religious. You're going to get theological. Oh, because it's this and it's that. And, and, and you're going to start to spew out the justification. Here comes your justification. And I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just simply putting it out there. Everybody is justifying their truth. You do it. I do it. Everybody does it. So everything I'm presenting here to, to you today on the things that I stand in, it's my truth. I don't need to defend it. I don't need to stand behind it with a sword. I'm not afraid to own it. Why I say that is because I've looked at my life I've, and what I've seen, folks, and it's not just me. I have seen countless predestination everywhere, meaning you don't have a choice 
You do not have a choice in your reality. And that bothers some of you. I, I know some of you like, not, not me. No, okay, of course, not, of course it's not you. I'm not trying to be funny or cute here. I'm simply saying to you that your life is predestined and scripted. You don't have a choice. The serial killers that incarnated, I decoded Ted Bundy, didn't have a choice. Ted Bundy did not have a choice. Zero choice. And I know some of you will completely disagree and say, okay, well then you better go get educated on astrology then. See, you're not comparing apples to apples. Don't sit here and tell me my methodology is wrong when you don't know anything about it. See, I'm ignorant, like trigonometry, like I know a little bit about, but I, the formulas and like, I'm not a rocket, like going to figure out how to fly a rocket into space or, okay, let's not use space because somebody's like, oh, we never went to space. Okay, fly a rocket, okay, a jet booster. I don't have the mathematical formulas in my mind on how to do that, but it doesn't mean that it's wrong because I don't know. <laughs> it just means I'm not, I'm ignorant in those areas. That's it. That's all it means. But I'm just telling you, ladies and gentlemen, when you, when you become a... <laughs> when you get your lobotomy, I think everybody needs a lobotomy. Lobo and the, the terminology is a little loose, but I'm saying is you need to get your memory erased because it is completely destroying your life. It's what it's doing. Because if you had, a, if you got your memory erased and you were with me in the beach and we were like, hey, let's go to the beach. Oh, hey, let's go have fun. Let's go have a couple beers. And you went on the beach and okay, what are we going to talk about? And you couldn't talk about religion. You couldn't talk about, oh, well, it's this culture. It's this God. It's, it's Quetzalcoatl. It's, you know, Uhuru Mazda. No, it's the, we, we can't have conversation because we don't even know that. Then we'd be studying the, oh, oh my God, the water feels so good on my skin. And look at the turtle over there and the fish. And that's, freaking life man but because mankind has tried to define life it is complicated life it has caused division it has caused wars which is inevitable and it is supposed to happen because this reality needs to feed off of energy it, you can't have bliss in this reality and have food there's no food in bliss yes you'll have an emotional reaction like oh my god this feels so good but folks do you know what the, you know what you know what food is fear anger hatred I'm right and you're wrong. Debating, division. That is food for whatever's, that's the ambrosia. And then if you're going to jump into the like, oh, I'm going to go have sex and pump out a kid or whatever, it's going to use you to experience that. Uh, so many things I've decoded on scripted reality showing you people don't have choices. If you're here to pump out a kid, you're supposed to. Just own that. Forget about what I said about if you have a kid, you're not gonna you're gonna be reincarnated. Forget about that. Just for, have a lobotomy moment. Forget about what I said. Just I have a kid. Okay, cool. So just be that. Okay, you're a parent. Raise your kid. Maybe your kid will win the Nobel Prize one day, and you'll be one proud house parent. And you'll prove me wrong. See, Logan, my kid won the Nobel Prize. Great, good for you. I'm ha I'm actually happy for you. <clears throat> Tigger asked me, have you done decodes on NASA? Yeah, the, uh, the yeah, actually, let me, let me, let me, I, I haven't done one directly, but let me just show you real quick. Let me show you the joke. Okay, let me just show you the joke. Okay. Here you go. Okay. This organization. And, and, and again, are you triggered by this? If you get triggered by this, what does that tell you about you, you being in control of your reality? You're not. It's using you. Whatever it is, is using you to get triggered. 
So if there is any free will in this reality, I say if now, if there is any, don't you think you should spend it on not getting triggered by these organizations? Because when you get triggered, you feed the machine. And when you get triggered, you have an emotional reaction that is going to make you decay faster. Because when you get triggered, you get angry and angry. Uh, the anger releases stress and cortisol goes up and adre the adrenal glands get fatigued. Folks, you're killing yourself because you get triggered by organizations that you are not even a part of. Oh, we never landed on the moon. Great. But this right here is the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. There you go. Bam, 138. We are 138. What is the 138? The Phoenix event? Do you think that these people are part of the Phoenix event? 1000%. The 138, what is that tied to? It's tied to the, and you gotta, you gotta go to alchemy. Where's my alchemy? You gotta go to alchemy to get the clue. <clears throat> and you're gonna go to this element right here, 56, barium. This is gonna be isotope 130. This is gonna be the average, but when you come down to the oxidate, this is the common isotopes. These are bridges to get the clue. It's the 138. See, it's the most abundant, 71%. 71, when you see 71, it's tied to Lucifer because Lucifer is the light bringer right here. 71 is lutetium, Lucifer, Lucy, the light bringer. You need light to play the game. This is the light game. Barium is the 56, which is the 138, which is tied to NASA because the 56 is the movie. Lights, camera, action. 56, which is tied to the 138, which is tied to barium, okay? The movie is the lights, camera, action, and NASA is that 138. So, are they trying to get you to believe in their movie? Yes. Just like you're trying to get other people to believe in your movie. By trying to be right, by try, trying to prove everybody else wrong, you got it all figured out. Everything is completely 100% accurate in your life. Your truth is absolutely unblemished. It's a five-star rating. You got everything right. That's how a lot of you live your life. When are you going to get humbled by this reality and realize you ain't in control of it? And that organization that I just showed you, believe you when I tell you, and well, I shouldn't even say that. I'm not even going to use that words. Consider that NASA is not in control of their reality. They are being used just like you are. That is my final answer. If you, if you want to have support, Go watch my MK Ultra decoded. And I showed in that decode the, the guys that create that were responsible for creating the program were being used to create the program by something outside of this reality. Which means and alludes to the fact that the you're all being MK Ultra including the guys that created the MKUltra program. They were being MKUltra. It's a Mandelbrot set. It's a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> That's what it is. It's so freeing when you can adopt this, at least consider it. It's so freeing. Like I don't, like NASA, what? I don't, I don't pay attention to any, any of their stuff. Like occasionally I watch a video of the rocket launch or to just to kind of, get a little entertained, check it out, see what I can see. It's very interesting. But I don't have it all figured out, folks. I can honestly and authentically tell you, I don't have it all figured out.
Corey Anderson's errands. Big shout out to Jason. He kind of made that, you know, errands make the program irritate. Yeah, I mean, I'm a disruptor. That's my tour, the disruption tour to be continued. Going on tour, I'm a disruptor. I'm a nihilist. Sungazing Lioness asks, what can we do to elevate our experience here? Study your code. Study your code. And then when you're done studying your code, study it again. And then when you're start done studying it again, study it some more. Study it some more. Read again. Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. Regurgitate it again. Read it again. Memorize it. Study it some more. The more you study, the better you will become as a human being and you'll be able to refine yourself. And, you, and some of you say, oh, I thought it's all scripted. Yeah, if you're doing this, you're scripted to do it. That's why, like, some people, well, if you just visualize and, you know, and, and you, oh, you, you, can, you can make millions of dollars. No, that doesn't work for everybody. It's not cookie cutter. If it was cookie cutter, then everybody could do it. And it ain't cookie cutter. Because some people are not, pro, they're, it's not in their screenplay. I mean, that's common sense. Rocker Chick asks the question, no free will. <laughs> I'm on the fence with it, folks. I, I, there was a point in my life where I was absolutely dead set against it. I was like, there's just no way. And then I went back to, okay, I can see how there could be some free will, but it's not a lot. It's very minimal. It's very minimal. And then I watch... I've been watching some Robert Sapolsky who's, you know, he's, he's an atheist, so there's that. And then, you know, hey, if, if you've got triggered by that, if you're like, oh, oh, he doesn't believe in God, that's you trying to be right. <laughs> if, you're my, if you can consciously catch yourself, <clears throat> I try to do it a lot in my life. I catch myself judging, criticizing, But go watch some of his stuff. <laughs> I put it on the Patreon, one of his videos. Fascinating dude. He went and studied baboons. He studied the fascinating shit. So I'm on the fence with it. Like, I, I know that I, I know that my final answer is we live in a predestined reality, a scripted reality. I mean, folks, if you want support, let's use some theology. You want some theology to support that? Those of you that are fans of theology, and again, if you are, great. Let me support predestination with, 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 uh, with the Bible. Let's just go to the New Testament. What does it say in the New Testament and Jesus' story about Judas Iscariot? Jesus clearly pointed out that Judas was going to deceive him before it ever happened. Judas didn't even know it. He may have had an idea he may have already plotted and planned it, but Jesus called it. And then, of course, Judas acted upon it in the story, in that context, and it happened, which leads to believe here that Judas did not have a choice. <laughs> how, how do you make a choice out of that? One of you will deceive me. But yeah, Judas, Judas, you got the damn nod for that. Predestination. Didn't have a choice. I mean, another one is, um, like, look at the church right now. The church being led by Pope Francis, who's the ace of clubs, which is the, the magic wand card, by the way. His, his birth card is the ace of clubs, which is the abracadabra card, by the, by the way. Just so happens to be that right there in, in the contract, the new contract with the two hearts. But anyway, he, you think he's budging from his position? Because a lot of people are like, that's the Antichrist. Well, he ain't budging. He ain't, he's not moving his position. 
And I just use logic and common sense. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. So here's a guy who leads over 1 billion people, a lot of power. Uh, you would think he knows a thing or two about a thing or two. Like he kind of knows a little bit about something. And he probably knows a little more than you and I. I would say, I would honest, I would admit that when absolutely he knows more than I do when it comes to esoteric and for sure. He knows things I don't know. Well, at least I know he knows things I don't know. He's not budging his placement in, on the world stage. He is all in. Now, if the guy knows a thing or two about a thing or two and people are saying, that's the Antichrist and, and he ain't budging, well, there's got to be a little bit more of the moral to the story then. Yeah, because if you go into the Bible and you read about the Bible in the lake of fire, what does it say? It'll, it says you're going to be consigned to the lake of fire. See, people don't read the book. They just regurgitate these ideas because it makes them feel good inside. You will be consigned to the lake of fire. What is consign? Go look up what the word, what does the word consignment mean? You ever go sell something at a pawn shop? You, you put it on consignment. You will be consigned to the lake of fire. You will be ordered to go to the, what is the lake of fire? This is the lake of fire. You're in it. <laughs> You're inside of it, man. It's the number 42, Lake of Fire 42, Reincarnation 42, Crucifixion 42. That's why you will never, ever in a million years see me do the cross or wear a cross or have anything to do with that symbol. Why? Because it means reincarnation. I'm not saying reincarnation is a bad thing. I'm completely neutral. Like if I get reincarnated, then I get reincarnated. I'm not going to be angry about it. I will be joyful and happy and I will be, and I probably won't even remember anyway. So what the hell is the point? But people, this fear is the most controlling emotion there is. That's how you control people. Fear. Oh, this is coming. That's coming. Weather modification. This and UFO. This and that. This could happen. And you may, your leg may fall off tomorrow. And you better wear this and you better not wear that. And a corduroys are going to cause toxic this and that. It's like fear is the greatest perpetuator of movement. Fear is. Fear. Fear in numerology is the number 16. Are you serious? Yeah, because Sirius is 16. And the 16th card in the tarot is, bam, the tower card. Fear. I'm not going to have enough. I don't know if I'm going to have enough. Oh, my God, I better do this. I better get an underground bunker. I better go, better go dig a ditch. I better go buy a piece of land. I better go do this. I better go, da, 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 they're going to do this and they're going to do that. Create, 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 create. Move, 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 move. I'm not going to have enough. I'm not going to do this. My family. Blah, 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 blah. Fear, 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 fear. People, I, I tell people, if you're going to go, go, if you want to go build a garden, don't build a garden because you think food shortages are coming. Go build a garden because you want fresh fruit or you want fresh vegetables. That's it. I want that. But I ain't going to want to create a garden because I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to have food anymore. No, I'm going to create... If I got to go a week or two weeks without eating because they, the, they, the food's, then I'm, I'm re guess what? I'm ready for it, folks. I can fast for two weeks. Can you? Some of you can't even run 100 feet without freaking gasping for air. What if you got to run from a disaster? Or you got to run from destruction? You'd be, you'd be dead meat. You're not even ready. Most of you are not ready because you're constantly just engaged in the, you're like paralyzed. Like, oh, what am I going to do? Oh my God, they're doing this. What are they going to do? Oh, crypto. Oh my God, they're going to take away this. They're going to do this. You're so paralyzed. It's such a nightmare. I know you got to, well, if it's scripted, you're going to, I know you're going to, some of you are going to go back to, well, if it's scripted, yeah, it's scripted. So you're, you're scripted to be paralyzed. Maybe you're here supposed to hear this message to become unparalyzed. How do you become, stop watching the freaking mainstream. Like that should be the shit in school, like telling the kids, don't watch the news. <laughs> 
It's like they, it's, and t- instead they tell you don't smoke pot or don't take mushrooms or don't do this or don't, yeah. How about don't watch the news? That should be above and beyond don't snort a line of coke. Don't watch the news. Oh, if you want to do a line of coke, go ahead, but don't watch the news. That's the way it should be in this reality. The news should be a, a higher than doing a line of blow or having a shot of whiskey. <laughs> R-A-N-B is asking, do you know anything about the golden orb of light? I've seen this about 15 years ago. I, I've had, I've seen videos. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't tell you. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I wish I could give you some, some answers on that. I just don't know. <clears throat> Mr. Obvious says, I've been practicing fasting for the last five years. It's not easy when you have food. Yeah, that's the, that's the challenge. If you're fasting, your devil is food. <laughs> it's that simple. You want to see the devil show up? You really want to see the devil show up? Don't eat for two days. And then go into a, go into a restaurant, your favorite restaurant, and just take a big... <sighs> And the devil will show up real quick because you will not be able to, or you'll have a, I shouldn't say you won't be able to, you'll have a very challenging time resisting the urge to eat your favorite food that you smell. That is the devil. That is desire. Desire is the devil, folks. It's that simple. Go fast for two days. And you're going to see the devil show up. That's why the parable in the story is Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And that's when the devil came because he was the, low, the, the most vulnerable. Yeah, of course. It was a parable. <laughs> Util- that's a gr- this is the best one. Utility Maximus says, I'm fearful there'll be an ice cream sandwich shortage. That's brilliant. That's awesome. Thanks everybody for showing up here, listening to my rants tonight. I've been kind of on a good one. It's been a lot of fun tonight. It's my first time back in the studio in a few months, so. Jason asks, if if Sirius is connected to source, would would it promote both fear and love to keep it balanced? Of course it would. How, okay. See if I can give you an analogy. Let me give you guys an analogy. Okay. Uh, Can't get a... Let me see if I can get something. I want to be able to give you guys a really good analogy. No, that's not it. God, it's not as easy as you think. What I, what I want to show you. Okay, so. Right here. I want you to focus your attention on this white square here. Okay. This is what a one layer reality would look like. 
this is, there's no darkness, there's no, there's no definition here. This, you could say this is tied to Sirius. You could say this is tied to the sun. Because it says God, in God there's no, there's no evil, there's no blemishes, there's no darkness. It's, it's pure white. Right? The stars, if you, you can't stare at the sun. Because it's pure white light. If this was your life every day, like meaning you had to go through this from start to finish, you wake up and this is all you can see. You look out your window, all you can see is this white light. You, you can't drive because you can't see nothing. How are you going to make your breakfast? How are you going to make your dinner? How are you going to feed your, your furries? This is all you see through the lens and it's very challenging to do it because I, I can't get this to blow up. But this is all you see constantly well see there's no definition here this is the same situation in genesis where it says that the earth was void and black instead of white it was black same thing if this was black and again i've used this analogy and you can use it go next time you have a group of friends over turn off all the lights where you can't see your hand in front of your face and then try to have some kind of adventure in the dark like that. You'll be tripping over each other. You'll be, you know, you can't, you need light to do that. So it's the same situation with light in the dark. See, you need contrast to know that the white is here. So if you can't see nothing but this, you now have no contrast. You can't, that doesn't work in this reality. Why do you think there are colors why do you, if everything, if there was no contrast here, there would be no colors. Everything would be the same color. Imagine everybody wore the same uniform, had the same hairstyle, looked the same way, you couldn't tell each other apart, had the same voice, had the same banter. It, it wouldn't work. You need the contrast. And that's exactly why this reality works in the duality. The sun comes up, then it goes down into the underworld. Now it's in darkness. And now, now Set has, this is Horus, this is Set. Night, this is daytime, this is nighttime. Okay, these are, these are ideas to fool around with and play with. If you just had this, if you had a reality that was based upon pure white like it never changed you have you have no contrast there's no learning there's no movement there's no energy explosions there's no nothing there's just mit blah that is why you have drama in your life because drama is what drives this reality and perpetuates it forward and creates this reality drama Girl, you got a lot of drama in your life. Yeah, but you love the drama. You love it. Because when life gets boring and you're sitting around and it's like, oh, well, you know, nothing's going on and you want change, you need some kind of drama in your life. That's what gets you to move. That's what keeps this reality going. Thanks everybody for coming on here tonight and sharing some of your Saturn day. We're almost in Sunday. Thanks for all your comments. Thanks for all your love. Thanks for all the support. All right, so let me, uh, 
let me let me give you another sneak peek. Uh, let's jump into um, this. Let's jump into some sports, which is currency. It's a religion. Sports is a religion. Religion. A legion of energy that you redo. Okay. It's a control tactic, which is a necessary part of this reality. It has its liabilities, it has its assets. But anyway, this was the humdinger for me. See, when I decoded Super Bowl 58 and I got it wrong, like everybody was crucifying me. Yeah, well, I got the Chiefs right, though. Did You didn't hear that, though. Oh, Logan, you got it wrong. And yeah, of course I did. And I admitted it and I even posted it. But I didn't see this part. Because a lot of people had informed me, hey, t- you know, do you realize Taylor Swift is a big part of this? I had no clue. No idea. And these people are influencers, right? They har- they're energy harvesters. With their music and their songs, that's their job. And you see, when you go study, this is, see, this is the, let me, let me, let me digress and show all of you. You got to see how this, this stuff works as a decoder, right? So when you type in anybody's name, okay, even her last name is Swift, which is tied to currency, right? But when you click on anybody uh, and you read about them, sometimes you will be able to get their mother's maiden name because here's her birth certificate name. But you see, that is not going to give you the full rendition. You need to, you come down here early life. See, she is uh, named after singer James Taylor. Her father, Scott Kingsley Swift, and her mother, Andrea Gardner Swift, and the knee, which is the mother's maiden name, is Finley. And this is the big clue. So when you go back to here, this is her full name in numerology, and that was the big humdinger clue. It is gold, which is exactly what sports and religion are. They are currency, which is gold. And it just so happens that both teams have gold in their jerseys. How about that? Is that a coincidence? See, there are so many moving parts to this. This is why I believe in a scripted reality. And yeah, okay, the NFL, it's just like the WWE, the World Wrestling Federation. Yeah, it's scripted. Yeah, we all know that. That's obvious. But life is scripted. So when you become aware that sports are scripted, religion scripted, Well, the next step for you in your refinement is you'll realize life is scripted and these people are being used by the script and this mankind is not in control of the script. They just exercise the script. Okay. So the the big takeaway here for this whole thing is that the fact that San Francisco is the headquarter location for the company Ripple. Ripple Labs, which is XRP, which is, in my opinion, going to be, if it continues to go this way, it will be kind of the glue that binds. It will be the bridge, uh, like the, the mediator of currencies. And the, the San Francisco are the 49ers. And they are the miners. This is why you have crypto mining. This is why in the NBA last year, the Denver Nuggets, who are also miners, they defeated the Miami Heat. See, I didn't pick the 49ers. I was riding, it doesn't matter. I was riding Aaron's coattails and the the Lions and all that stuff. I was just like, there was a lot of merit to that. But obviously, this is the two two teams. And Kansas City are the Chiefs. And the Chiefs are tied to the Fallen Angels story. That's why there are chiefs in the 200 fallen angel story in the book of Enoch. Seven verses nine, chapter seven verses nine in the book of Enoch. There it is, gold. It's the chiefs tied to the fallen angel story. Is it, are there really fallen angels here? I don't know. I've never met one, so I can't guarantee that there's true. It's a story. But how, how, how beautiful of a picture this is that this girl who's been, and why she's such a big proponent of this Super Bowl is because this is her boyfriend. I think this is what the story, the narrative is of it, is, is, is uh, Travis Kelsey, right? That's, 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 they got them, whether or not they're a couple, I don't know. 
but he's like being graded as one of the greatest tight ends ever. This guy. And she's seen with him, okay? So now you see that the Chiefs and the 49ers, and this is tied to cryptocurrency because this is a this is where Leave the World Behind comes into play. Leave the World Behind, the whole movie was telling you that it, we have massive change. You're going to get into Leviticus 7 verses 19, which talks about the people will be throwing their silver and their gold into the streets while not have any value anymore. This is the exchange of a hard fiat currency into, into digital cryptocurrency. That's the change over. And it's all based on gold, which is based on the sun. Okay? These people are all being used to harvest energy. That's it. And she just so happens to sing, and she's a great singer, and he just so happens to be one of the greatest tight ends ever. I mean, you just don't get put in these positions because you, you suck. You got to do the work. Plenty of singing lessons and plenty of practices this guy's been to. Okay? But the interesting part is, is Taylor's birthday. She was born on December 13th, and she had this video about the 13, 13 and 13, and the third, the third. Why the 13? Because it's pi and phi, 3.1 and 1.61. 13 is tied to the death card in the tarot. Because death is what brings and ushers in the new change in life. Okay? This is, the, this is tied to the Phoenix event as well. Absolutely it is. So her birthday is on the 13th of December. This is so fascinating because this guy right here died on December 13th. And who is this dude? He was the founder of the Chiefs. Lamar Hunt was the founder of the Chiefs and his death day matches the birthday of Taylor Swift, who just so happens to be caught in the tabloids with the the phenom tight end who's in the Super Bowl right now. Does this mean, does this guarantee that they're going to win? I'm not going to make that determination. I'm not going to make a decision on this. Because I got to tell you, this is, I've, I've picked the last three Super Bowl winners. This one is the most toughest challenging to pick this time around. Maybe not for you. Maybe it's easy for you. Like, oh, I got to figure it out. And then when you win, you'll come back and say, see, Logan, I told you. Yeah, good for you. Pat yourself on the back. Congratulations. Maybe you just got lucky. But anyway, no such thing as luck. But anyway, I mean, how uncanny is that? The guy who founded the Kansas City Chiefs has, this, has, this, has a death day of the same birthday of Taylor Swift who's promoting the Kansas City Chiefs who is all about gold. <laughs> and they both got gold in their jerseys. What? Crazy synchronicities. Crazy synchronicities. And there's Taylor Swift right there. And here are the two. And you can see they both start with the letter T. <clears throat> Taylor and Travis. And um, the, the interesting part about these two is their birth cities. Taylor Swift, she was born in West Reading, Pennsylvania. And Travis, West Lake, Ohio. Coincidence? Do you actually believe that the NFL is selecting these people to mock you and to get one past you? <laughs> and they're picking these people based upon having the same West in their birth cities? Come on. But anyway, that's the script that we live in, and I just thought I would measure the distance between Westlake, Ohio, and West Reading, Pennsylvania, and what do you see right there? That is not only the spring equinox, which I've already talked about, but if you just round that up one digit, you're going to get to 322. <laughs> And now you're going to get people, it's the skull and bones. It's the Jesuits. See, they're doing this and th they're not doing shit. They're not even in control of this reality. They're just being used. All these people are being used. They're all, it's all entertainment. And we got to have fun with this. This guy, his code gave him to be a star tight end quarterback, considered one of the greatest of all time. She got the code of being one of a great singer. Okay. That's what she got. She didn't get to choose her position. Neither did Travis Kelsey. They naturally were urged and pushed into these positions because they were destined to be that. Just like 
Lamar Hunt was destined to be a football owner, et cetera, et cetera. He was one of the founders of the NF of the AFL on top of that. Big code the guy got. But his birthday, his death day matches the birthday of Taylor Swift. She's promoting the Chiefs with uh, Kelsey and she's all about gold. Come on. This is so blatant. So blatant. So freaking, such a scripted reality. And it's hilarious to me. It's so funny. That you will not find uh, on ESPN. Yeah, Usher's performing uh, Taylor Swift, the Swift banking system. Come on, folks. Gold, cryptocurrency, XRP, Ripple. So obvious. This is, folks, this is how our reality works. This is my truth now, okay? Energy gets harvested, okay? And it's a magic show. So when you have energy focused on a specific topic or game or religion, that energy gets harvested, especially during Passovers and Christmas. These are major energy harvesting uh, situations. I don't like to use the word ritual because when people think ritual, they think someone's controlling the ritual. No. It's just an energy harvesting situation. But these games, especially like anybody that tunes into the Super Bowl, you're participating in the energy harvesting that's going on. You can't help it because your eyeballs that are on the game, you're giving it energy and they want as many eyeballs. That's why they charge millions of dollars for these companies to put their commercials on there because they know they're going to make a lot of money with that. Why do you think they spend the millions of dollars? And it's such a joke. It's like this whole stupid game about tax write-offs. It's all so ridiculous. I mean, look at the legal system they got. You get attorney client privileges. So I can tell my attorney something and it completely could be a crime, but the attorney can't go tell anybody about it. It's such a joke the way this whole reality works. I get why those thing, things are in place, but it is a absolute absurdity joke. <laughs> so funny. But the way this energy harvesting works is people give it their attention and they use that to move it into the next layer of what the supernatural wants. It uses you. It's gas. It's siphoning the gas. People's attention. It's a siphon. It siphons the energy. That's how I have it pegged. Maybe you have it pegged a different way. Ray Love says, your truth or your opinion. Doesn't matter which one you, you can say, if you're asking me, truth or opinion, well, what's the difference? Is there any difference between a truth and an opinion of yours? Because you can say, well, that's my opinion. Yeah, but you wouldn't have told me that if you didn't believe in it. So what you believe in, that's your truth. I, I don't know if I'm taking your comment out of context Ray Love so if I did I, I, I had no intentions of anything being malefic there <clears throat> energy yeah the word vampire equals 27 sports equals 27 currency equals 27 religion equals 27 vampire equals 27 let me take all of you on that journey again let's do it real quick here we go ready let's go to numerology religion 27, same as sports. Sports is a religion. Same as currency. That's what we're being harvested for, which is a vampire. Vampire. Which is, this is, this is Ensof. Ensof is tied to Sirius. I don't know, I don't even know Ensof in... Chaldean is 29, but in the Hebrew, it's going to be 27. It's all a Ponzi scheme, by the way. It's, this whole thing's a Ponzi scheme, and not in a bad way. Meaning that this reality is all subordinate to whatever's siphoning the energy off. Same thing with a company. You have, the, you have a company, and you have all the workers, and then you have the managers, and then you have the directors and the CEOs 
but then you have the boss that boss is siphoning all the that boss gets everything at the very top makes the most usually gets the most recognition usually because the boss the chief that's the ponzi scheme a ponzi scheme in a company is means it's all pyramid from the top down and it's a funneling of energy Greg says the top of the football stadium is shaped like a big eye. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> Utility Maximus is asking is 23 a power uh, is 23 a power number if you if you believe that it's see 23 is a power number because there are plenty of people that believe 23 is a power number so if you jump on like i'm going to jump on the band what is i want to say what the bandwagon is jump on the bandwagon bandwagon is 34. okay which is the ninth fibonacci number <clears throat> um but there are plenty of people that believe 23 is a powerful number in numerology, like in Chiro's book of numbers, which I learned the 20, a lot of people change. When I first got started in numerology, I was like, oh my God, this 23, how can I get my name to be 23? People change their name to be the 23, which is the five, right? The two and three. So is it beneficial? I mean, there are people that probably think it's evil. See, somebody's going to think it's good. Somebody think it's going to be evil. It's going to be the matter of your screenplay. You'll have somebody that lived at house number 23 and they had a massive divorce. Maybe they had they found their husband or wife cheating on them and they just never forgot that 23. Like, oh my God, 23. I had the worst experience in my life. And then you have other people praising it. Not everybody. There's 23 is not, there's, there's no five-star rating in this reality. There's just not. So where do you think we move on to when we exit, exit stage left? I, I don't know. Couldn't tell you. I don't even know how you'd even make that choice. Jack Walter asks, is asking about the syncretism. What happened to the syncretism society? It dissolved. Uh, Danny, uh, I, was, I was very fortunate to be a part of that. Uh, I'm like one of the few remaining people here where it originally started in Puerto. Everybody's dispersed pretty much. Um, but uh, it just, it didn't work out. It didn't work out the way they wanted it to. Santos went down to the mountains in in, uh, in Mexico and he's he's doing his thing down there. They he's I guess he's supposed to revive it with Danny. I, I, don't, I don't know. I haven't talked to those guys about it. But it just didn't pan out the way they thought it would pan out, you know? I mean, their intentions were to deliver to the world a place where you can come to a retreat where you could come and change your life, you know, like a, a retreat, whatever it is, physical, mental. And it just didn't, it didn't pan out that way. It just wasn't supposed to happen that way. So it just dissolved and that's it. You know, if they, um, if they revive it, they revive it. I don't know anything about reviving it though. I know Santos has talked about reviving it, but I haven't talked to him straight up on it in a very long time, so I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, is Jim Carrey movie 23 a must watch? I think it's a great movie. I'm a huge fan of Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey, Jesus Christ. He's got the 10 of diamonds card, card 36, Jesus Christ equals 36. I mean, Jesus Christ, you're talking about a scripted reality. Yeah, Jim Carrey, JC, Jesus Christ. So blatant. Rick's asking, was Danny a con man? Uh, oh, well, so, uh, you retracted that. So, but I'll answer your question. Absolutely not. People are going to say what they want to say. I, I got to meet Danny. I got to hang out with Danny. I got to be friends with Danny. I have him, in, I have him on my phone. I can still reach out to him. He, I don't know where he's at. I think he's still in Africa, but... 
the way I know Danny is, he will give you the shirt off his back. But when he, it was so interesting because you, he, when he first came on the camera, people saw this guy with a tank top on. He had muscles and, he, you know, good looking guy. And, you know, he talks a certain way. And, oh, he's just, and then they immediately started judging him. I saw it. And then over time, they gradually got to know him. Not everybody liked him. But then over time, they got to know him. And then it was like, where's Danny? Where's Danny? Yeah, well, what, you know, because people change with their, with their speculations and their assumptions. So I know of Danny to be this amazing guy who would help a brother out if you needed, needed him to help you out. His intentions behind the Syncretism Society were definitely completely utopian. And he really wanted to help people. It just didn't pan out. It was maybe not the right timing. Uh, and that's what I got to say about Danny. That's it. That's what I know about him. Okay. But you had all these crazy, oh, the, he was in a picture in the United Nations. Who gives a shit? See, Pete, and it's just so amazing. And then they started posting videos about, yeah, Santos got a little violent. I told you, that's the behavior. I don't like, I don't resonate with him. And that created a big space for people to start to judge and say, you know, it was this and then people went on to make videos and like, man, you got nothing better to do, but to sit there and spend time on trying to be a parasite, take people down. It's just, Again, I, I don't resonate with that kind of behavior. So. Uh, sun gazing lioness, but no, Danny did not hijack Santos' syncretism. That is not anything closely remote to any truth. No. I was here, I know firsthand, so I can tell you, no. That is not what happened. Uh, what do I think about David Copper promoting the making the moon disappear? I don't again. I don't follow the mainstream. I don't really know much about it. I haven't looked into it. <clears throat> Jason's asking if I've decoded my family's coat of arms. I have not. No. RJ is asking about the number eight and his birthday. Well, you go study the number eight. You know, like just type in eight numerology and you'll have millions of hits on that. Study the number eight from different various opinions on the internet and uh, study, study, study. You know, it's a, the, the, the interesting part of numbers is, let me just take you on this journey now, is that when you look at the numbering sequence here, and you go through these numbers. And this is the full lineage, right? All the numbers, all nine numbers. If you want to count the zero as a number, then, you know, to me, it's the zero. So it's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you'd have the 10 here and you'd start back over again. But there's only two numbers that if you were to, if you grab a piece of paper and you have a pen, there are only two numbers that you can put a pen to the paper and draw the number and continually draw it without having to pick the pen up off the paper. Those two numbers are the zero. You just go around and around and around and around. And the number eight, the eight is you just, it's the infinity symbol like this. Never have to pick your pen up off the, anything else, the number nine, you got to stop and you got to go back up to the top. The number seven, you have to draw the line. You got to go back up to the top. The six, you have to stop and go back up to the top. The five, you have to come from the bottom, go back up to the top. The eight and the zero are the only two numbers that you do not have to remove your pen from the paper. These two. And, and this right here is tied to the tree of life in Hebrew, right? Which is, watch, the tree of life. through the biblical Judaism story. Okay, it's gonna be right here. Uh, here's the Hebrew, this is the origination of it now, right where it came from. There it is, this is gonna be tree, and this is gonna be life. Whoops. So we have to go up and we have to get the Hebrew.
And there's the 80. There's the tree, which is 34. Okay, which is some some people have the exception. Some people have 34 vertebrae. Most have 33. But this is going to reduce down to the number seven. You have seven chakras, seven days of the week. Seven is the fourth prime number. You have four blood types. And then you have the of life, tree of life, 46. The 46 card in the tarot is this. This is life. Yay! Let's be merry. Oh my God, we just had a couple kids. Let's go play around. The rainbow. But you know who has this as their founding card is the Society of Jesus. Oh, what a coincidence. 46 is tied to the uh, two base pairs of our DNA as well. It's the mirror of the 64. Okay. 46. That this means life of life. Tree of life. Right? The 80. This is tied to Mercury. It's tied to Jesus. All right? The tree of life is the 80. So the number 80 is the 8 and the 0. The 0 means infinite potential. And the number 8 is power. It's the Taurus field. It's the infinity symbol. It's the sine wave. See, this number 8 is tied to source because that's 26. That's going to give you 8. And it's also going to be tied to infinity, which is an 8. 26 slash 8. That's because the 8 is the infinity symbol. And that is the sine wave that you're, you and I are stuck in, is the infinity wave. And it's infinite. It may change, but it never ends. It's infinite, infinity. And this is tied to the sun. Because 19 through mathematics, uh, why is my, all my, go to numberempire.com and the number 19 is the eighth prime number. So this mathematics tells us, and what is the 19th card in the tarot? The sun. So the sun gives off a sine and cosine wave, which forms the deoxyribonucleic acid. The sun is the ribonucleic acid. And Eve was formed from the rib, the ribonucleic acid of Adam. Adam is tied to the sun. This is, the, this is Eden. And this is the garden. The garden of Eden. Eden is the sun. The garden is earth and Eden is the sun, which was created for mankind to live in through the context of that story. So 19 being the eighth prime number, the infinity is tied to the number eight, source is tied to the number eight, the word occult is tied to the number eight, eight is tied to Jesus because it's 18 and Jesus is 18. Oops. Same as Christ. That's why you're all the Christ having a Jesus Christ superstar experience. And this Jesus Christ character is the 36, which is tied to the word operating. As an operating system, which is the 56, which is lights, camera, action. Operating system is 56, lights, camera, action. The movie is the operating system. And the operating system is the 369, which is the this character right here. Okay, it's the operating system. <clears throat> it's really easy to see this. It's a double 18. It's a 99 if you reduce it down. That's just a little decoding for you, but. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do something I've never done before. I got to take a squirt. I got to take a whiz. I'm going to put myself, uh, I'm going to put this up right here. I'll be right back. Stay tuned.
Whew, geez, that was like a record. Whew, holy mackerel. It was one of those when you go to the bathroom and you can't even stand up straight. Your freaking bladder's so about ready to explode. I didn't know I had to go so freaking bad. Whew. Wow. I had a whole a liter of water and then I had a blender. Before I came on, I had a blender full of pineapple, cucumber, celery. Whew. That was a freaking record, record-breaking urination. I didn't think it was ever going to stop. I should have freaking timed that sucker. <laughs> All right. Have I heard... Uh, 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 Kilt is asking if I've heard of a moto and the water crystal. Yeah, I love that whole thing, man. You, you, that is... You, that that whole thing is the same way the body works. Make it, you're being impressed upon. So, so there are people that take a, a a petri. You can do this too. Take a petri dish. You put water in it, and you can put it over the top of a picture. I want to do this with a tarot card. I haven't done it yet, but you do it with like a tarot card. So you take the petri dish and you put it over the top. You basically put it over the top of a of a picture, right? And then you freeze it. You put it there, and then you put it in the freezer, and the damn thing shows up with the picture of the card. It's insane. Which tells you that the, the, the water has memory, and this is clearly telling all of us that you're being impressed upon. You're, things are having an impression on you. Like, I'm. this is why I say, oh, I was pretty impressed. You're, no, you're constantly getting an impression so water has memory yes we we do we're being impressed upon by influences this is why people are influencers <clears throat> if i figured i would come i grab my bottle of wine this is the if you want to this bottle of wine here is amazing i, I think it's spanish though but the, if you can get this one, it's called Grand Reserva. It's a, it's a, is it a cab? Yeah, it's a cab. This stuff is like, whoo, it's good stuff. Had a duck on it, I think. Quack. Uh, I think it's a product of Spain. Now let me see. Can't freaking. Oh, chili. It's a chili wine. Yeah. It's good. Of course, it had, it was, had an, a rating of 91, and I know 91's tied to Lucifer, and I'm like, oh, let me get that one. <laughs> I like to play with numbers. I experience things through numbers. So it was the number of raw. The price was 226 pesos, and it had a 91 rating. So I was like, okay, well, there's the sun. Iron Princeton says funny because 73 backwards is obviously 37. It's a palindrome, which ties in with the, the royal star of the bull. So let me show you this. So I'm going to, again, Chaldean, I'm going to use Chaldean numerology. And you're going to see that um, you're on television, 73. This is, this is, uh, What's your question? 73. The mirror of that is the 37. Who's on television? Who's watching you? The eye in the sky is watching you. I, I, I've got a DOD code on. You know that song, Rockwell? Somebody's watching me? Yeah, that's all scripted. There's a reason why... Uh, Alan Parsons had this song... The album, there's the eye, right? What do you think that, what do you think? This is tied to the thalamus. See, the, this is the thalamus. This is another one I, I didn't tell you here. So we have sports is 23, 27. We have religion is 27. We have currency, which is 27, which is the vampire. And what is it, what is it vampiring off of you? Your thalamus, you see? That's the vampire, is this. The implant in your brain. That's the thalamus right there. This is tied to the pineal gland. Thalamus, baby. It's the, the, the golden egg. Okay? That's what this stuff means. You're being parasited. But anyway, 
you could see you see look at the b-side it's gemini gemini is the master gemini is the is 19 which is tied to the word master which is the battery which is harvesting your energy why gemini because in astrology this is where sirius is right there 20 degrees gemini if you're a fan of tropical it will be in cancer but you can see how it doesn't numerology it doesn't line up with tropical it only lines up with vedic sidereal because of the gemini marker gemini being the 19 and this is the doppelganger this is your doppelganger the doppelganger is 54 and that's because god is within you all right it's 54 what's 54 got to go to the periodic table for that clue 54 is xenon which means the stranger yeah that's the stranger in your head xenon is going to also be a 27. the stranger in your head is the thalamus which is the vampire draining you of your energy and harvesting you for the energy it's the eye in the sky watching you that's why gemini was the b-side they knew it was up. he knows what's up you know it's as clear as day of what this is talking about right here if you go watch some of this stuff you're going to see them making the all they're going to make in the pyramid they're going to make the pyramid uh over their head i've watched some of the live versions the band uh makes the the pyramid all right <clears throat> But this is all Gemini. I mean, they released it in May. Gemini is tied to the month of May. Okay? That's because that's where Sirius is at, folks. Right here. And you're going to have this tied to uh, the star sign of Orion. Why Orion? Because... When you look at the... The, the, the side of Orion. We know that the Orion's bell is tied up to the pyramids and the pyramids are tied, they're heavy into Sirius because Sirius is what caused the Nile River to flood. But the main stars, you have Rigel, which is one of the brightest stars, and you have Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is tied to destruction because, and it's in the constellation Orion, it's designated Alpha Orionis. <coughs> Alpha Orionis. Alpha means predator, folks. Betelgeuse is the predator in the constellation in the sky. The job of Betelgeuse, have you ever seen the movie Betelgeuse? You should probably go watch this movie. Guy can't type tonight. You should go watch this movie because this guy was all about horror and fear and and he was played by um, Michael Keaton who had the September 5th birthday which is the 95 which is the one half of the I am or the 59 if you write it in Europe which is the game of life so I'm right now I'm studying a lot of this star uh, Beetlejuice and this star seed, uh, and this is Latinized, which means the church. This is a lot to do with the Vatican, folks. I'm telling you right now, this has a lot to do with the Vatican. The Pope was seen wearing a cross, and that cross had the Egyptian symbol on it. Okay? This is all where this has come to. Or, uh, the Orion, Osiris, Set, Ra. This is all where this is coming to. You just gotta, you just gotta start looking. So yeah, that was that was just for fun right there. But I'm telling you, this on the Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is <laughs> Beetlejuice. Ah, oh, I should have did this too. In the um, Beetlejuice in the original Arabic, which means the hand of Gem uh, the hand of Gemini. The hand of Gemini, 
is 70 freaking three. 73, baby. Infinity Meta says, happy birthday, Logan. Thank you so very much. I, uh, that's a little shy, but I'll take it. Uh, I, don't, I don't celebrate my birthday. I really never have. Just another day to me, but I appreciate it. Uh, and I have another 40 minutes to go. 1.03 a.m. on Eastern Standard Time. I was born in Connecticut. <clears throat> Yeah, just don't say it three times, M. Douglas says. Don't, don't say Beetlejuice three times. I think Michael Keaton did a phenomenal job in that movie. Phenomenal. Rick's asking about why there's evil behind door 101. Remember that um, Thomas A. Anderson in the original Matrix movie was in apartment 101. 101 is, the tw <coughs> 101 is the 26th prime number tied to source, tied to yod heh vah -Heh, tied to infinity. One hundred one is tied to the number 44 because 44 is ruthenium and ruthenium has an atomic weight of 101. 44 is tied to the word underworld. The 44th card in the tarot, well, 43rd slash 44th card in the deck, the clue with the tarot. <coughs> uh, let's see if I can find it. Which I, I, All of you should have watched my Welcome to the Jungle. It was a great decode, I thought. Welcome to the Jungle decoded, but the um, 43rd, 44th card in the deck is the Eight of Cups. It's the Eight. The infinity symbol, right? So the, the eight of cups is the card of, this is spirit now, right? Is saying, hey, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go play that game called life. And that just may be the way it works. Every star in the sky has a chance to come down here and be a star on earth. That's why you have the star card being the 17th card. And just maybe, that's your home. You know, they say like the stars are the dust made up of stardust and you have the alchemical elements and the, the chemical elements that make the most important ones, et cetera, et cetera. Those tied to the sun, the six most important chemical elements to the body. When you do the molar mass and you do the protons, neutrons, and electrons, and you add them up, you get 171, which is the pattern of the sun. It makes, it makes that 171 shape, the boomerang. <coughs> the sun's a star. <laughs> Plutonium is 44, yeah. The word kill is 44. In uh, English, I think it is. Steven says 303 is the 19th, well, 1999 is the 303rd prime number. We're gonna party like it's 1999, 303rd prime number. Steven, thanks for reminding us, Steven. <clears throat> uh, Jason asked if I'm gonna expand on my serious decoded. Yeah, let me, uh, let's see if I have. Where do I, where is the hell is it? Hold on one sec. Uh, Well, 
I'll give you guys a, a little sneak peek. So I have, a, I have this uh, instructional video on how to, um, how to use the, <coughs> the capital the capital letter cipher, which is kind of tied to Francis Bacon. I'm naming this capital because it's just using uh, only the capital letters, not using any of the lowercase. This is typically fashioned around the Francis Bacon cipher using A through Z, 1 through 26, and then the capital A through Z, 27 through 52. But I'm just taking the 27 through 52. as Obviously, how big that 27 is is tied to vampire, currency, religion, sports, uh, thalamus, you know, the 27, and this is what it looks like. So I'm, I've been tinkering around, like, what is home? Wh where's home? So what does the capital cipher have to say about home? Well, it's the 145, which is tied to Prometheus. And it just goes to show you that some of this stuff in mainstream, like the, the movie 2012, Ridley Scott and Prometheus, uh, was talking about them visiting a planet and that, that was the origins of mankind and th when they got there the, they, they didn't meet a welcomed entourage it was they, they wanted to take you out but in the beginning of the movie you had the alien on or the the engine it's an engineer and that engineer <coughs> was sprinkling the dna or sacrificing itself for the benefit of creating mankind in the waterfall uh, and a lot of it had to, it pointed to Prometheus. And Prometheus in the Greek mythology is said to have molded med from clay. So there is some merit to the story of Prometheus being the creator of mankind. And then you get into theology to, to maybe uh, solidify that where Jesus says, your father's the devil. And Prometheus is said to have stolen fire and given it to the human beings, which is knowledge. So there is the story connections here with mythology, with theology, which is very, very interesting. This 145. And then, you know, the Sirius is the mirror of the 16. See, Prometheus has 61 protons, or Promethium does. The mirror of that is the 16, and that's Sirius. And this is the Tower card, and this is so very fitting because you have in the Tower card in the, in the Alistair Crowley deck, you have the all-seeing eye at the top. You also have Yaldabaoth at the top, Yaldabaoth being the lord of Sirius, which indicates that Yaldabaoth is either the sun or the moon. It is not Sirius itself, especially in the Quran, one of the verses and chapters in the Quran, it specifically says in that book that the Lord, uh, the, the Demiurge, Allah, is the Lord of Sirius. Well, you know, if you know what Allah is, it's, there, it's a Ponzi scheme. That's no disrespect to that entity called Allah. It's just trying to bridge the Allah is 13, uh, in Chaldean numerology, which is tied to the sun in in its own original language, it's going to be the number 30, which is tied to Jehovah and Demiurge. So Allah is Jehovah, the yod -Vah. There is There is no separation on this stuff. It's all a Ponzi scheme. It owns all the religions, all the names. So if it doesn't get you one way, it gets the other. It wants worship, and it gets worship through energy exchange. So this Sirius is a very interesting energy. The brightest star in the night sky may be being in a binary system with our sun. And this is where you're going to get masonry. And this is the beauty in masonry. And this is why, like, I just chuckle now when people get so pissed and they just say, oh, you know, it's free masonry and yada, yada. It's like, dude, you, you're not even educated. You're just, just a professional regurgitator is all you are. And that's my opinion in truth. You don't have to agree with it. But you can clearly see now the, the, the deciding factor here uh, of this puzzle, the sun and moon on either side of the square and compass, and this being obviously the mighty star Sirius, and that's where you're gonna get your dollar bill and why it's on the back of the dollar bill. And when it says in God we trust, you can start to see, and, and this is also tied to Jupiter because Jupiter has the, the great red spot on it. So we can't leave out the mighty Zeus, the Olympian, the mighty Zeus, because there's a lot of homage that's paid to that through the, the mythologies and the Roman the Roman uh, mythologies, et cetera, et cetera. But now you know, and this G of course, is uh, tied to the golden spiral, <coughs> the, uh, the, the golden ratio, and it is the capital G, which is the 33rd letter in the capital letters. So now you get the 33. And 33 is uh, definitely tied to raw and arsenic because arsenic is poisonous. That's what this thing does. This thing controls. And this is tie also tied to Betelgeuse because remember, Sirius is right across the way from Betelgeuse, and Betelgeuse is Alpha Orionis, which is, means it's the predator. 
Okay, so these stars all connect. They have a team effort, and you can see why the 16 has a lot of merit here. The word hell equals 16. The word fire equals 16. The word light equals 16. And it reduces down to the number seven. And seven is tied to Jesus because seven in numerology equals 24, just like Jesus. This is the card of Gemini. The tower card is a Gemini card because the 13th card sits in the middle, which is death. 14 is Aries. 15, which is the devil card, is a Taurian base card. Those of you that are Tauruses, you get the devil card in your slot. Why Taurus? Because Taurus is Venus ruled and Venus is all about Pandora's box, which and I told you it's the trap. Love is the trap here. You don't have to agree with me. I don't care if you agree with me. But it's the trap. Okay? This masonry. So when you do the words I in the sky <coughs> in the capital letters, you get the 432. <coughs> and <clears throat> you have to now reduce this down to get another layer. And what we want to do is use the rules of the cards of illumination, even the 52 letters of the capital and lowercase letters, but fit prison planet is 52. So if you get any number above the 52, you can subtract the 52 to get a layer at what it's going to look like through the letters of the alphabet and also the cards of illumination and the 432. When you subtract the number 52, you got to do it eight times to get to 52 or below and bam, just like that, you get the 16. So through the capital letter cipher, the 432, it goes back to the number 16 which is tied to serious. Are you serious? Yeah, and here's the crazy serious part of my life. My parents right now in Myrtle Beach, that's where they live. The address they live at is 4230. My mom's a Jehovah's Witness. What do you think she's pledging to? She's all about Jehovah. <laughs> what do you think it leads to? Anyway, that's for a different story. The final slide I have here for this little mini preview of Sirius <coughs> is going to the string of the golden ratio with this 432. Remember, 432 hertz is a big hertz in the solfeggio frequency range. It's a big one, a 432. 432 in the string of the golden ratio occupies digit 233, 234, and 235. Is 233 a big number in mathematics? Absolutely. The 51st prime number, the 13th Fibonacci number, 13 is tied to the word soul, which is sun. This is tied to, it's in a binary system with the sun. 51 is tied to antimony, and now you have the connecting point of Genesis 6, verses 3, where it talks about the yod heh vah -Heh saying, I will not reside in man forever, Man will only live to 120 years because 51 is tied to the implant in your brain. This is tied to Ensof. Ensof's tied to Sirius. Okay? Sirius. 51 is tied to the word parasitos, which is the Greek word for parasite, because your thalamus is being parasited by the eye in the sky. That's why it's watching you. Even the 113 is a big deal because. The 113 in the number empire.com is going to be the 30th prime number. And 30 is a big, big word tied to a number because it's tied to the Demiurge, <clears throat> which is also tied to Allah. Allah in its original Arabic spelling is 30. Okay, which is this. Okay, so now you know, folks. I mean, uh, you, you can see it now. How it's all connected. Okay? It's all, it's parasiting you. Now, is there any relief from that? Maybe. Like, wh how do I get the connecting point of, of well, 51 is antimony. Antimony is 28. That's Lucifer. This is called stibnite. Okay? There's an actual mineral for that. But th why is this icon chosen? And why the 120? Well, again, you got to go to theology for that. And we're going to go to Genesis 6, verses 3. And we're going to read, let me just get the KG because it's easy. It says, my spirit shall not, does it say your spirit? Where does it say that you have a spirit and you're in control? No, the Lord. And what is Lord? The Lord is 16, which is Sirius. Okay. So you have the Lord, you have Sirius saying, my spirit shall not always strive with man, his day shall be 120 years. 120 years. 
my spirit, my parasite, I'm parasiting you. I'm parasiting your thalamus. Okay, I'm parasiting your thalamus. And it's going to tell you, whoops. And the thalamus is where you're going to go to heaven. And this is where you'll find sports. Some people think heaven is sports. <laughs> Some people want the religion. But we all can see that it's just all currency. That's it. And when you go to the periodic, like the 27 is really big. Like what is 27? Cobalt. Okay, 27. And when you click on the picture, the icon, there's the goblin. This means goblin. And there are the two uh, dragons. Okay, Michael and the dragon. This is the yin yang. And here's the pineal gland, obviously. And this comes from the, the, uh, the German word cobalt. This one. Um, right there. It means goblin. So we take cobalt. There's the clue. What is cobalt? The number 19. And what's the 19th card in the tarot? The sun, which is the master. You see? Which is a battery. Which is why this song, <laughs> this song, Battery, was sung by a band called Metallica off their album Master of Puppets. Huh. Coincidence? Absolutely freaking lutely not. And there's a street in San Francisco called Battery Street, which is where the San Francisco 49... Anyway, I could keep going on and on. This is just... It's just too easy. It's too easy. And this is... I feel like we're, we're all getting so close to figuring this out. This is where you're going to get the, the, the Tower of Babel story where uh, now you're going to scatter everybody because it's like you're getting, too tr you're getting too close to the truth of the machinations of how this reality works. And it's like, uh, you can't figure this. If It's like Jason Bourne trying to figure out, uh, you know, where he's from. Treadstone. What's his origination from? And you can't, I can't tell you that. You signed up for this. And you have a contract with God and God's using you. Maybe you signed up for this. And one of the requisites is you're going to not remember anything. And you're like, hey, I'll go, I'll go do that. Utility Maximus is asking me if I have crypto. Yeah, I got some, but I don't watch it. I just, I collect it. That's it. I don't even know how much I got. I, could, I don't care. It's, see, I'm, I'm living in a space where I'm not in this for the money. I mean, money's great. <clears throat> and if I become wealthy, then I become wealthy in the sense of what you think wealth means. But I'm, I'm, my, my agenda is not that. My agenda is, is this. This is my agenda. This is my, this is where, this is my Rahu. My, my, my north node of my moon is in the hermit. It's in the ninth house of Sagittarius. And this is the ninth card. This is my liberation. I'm, 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 I'm a hermit and I'm supposed to use my Gemini and my K2 to tell the world about it. So I'm, I'm literally giving you my lantern. It's not for everybody. It pisses a lot of people off. I get a lot of persecution. I mean, I got death threats because I put out Super Bowl 58 decoded and I, I only got 50% right. I got, I got it 50% right and I have people... Anyways, look at that the devil at the bottom of the card. Deck. I'm still working on the course. I'm, I'm, I got to figure this thing out, the course. I know I, I have so many people asking me. And I just, I have so many things going on. And it's been shelved, it's been shelved, it's been shelved. And I, and I know a lot of people have been asking me. And I got I to gotta pull it off the shelf and I got to do it. So... We are still in the Chinese year, the water rabbit. That's uh, soon to be 
sayonara because we're, we're moving into uh, the Year of the Dragon on February 10th or 11th. Appreciate each and every one of you for being here tonight. Someone's asking me about <coughs> Dolores Cannon. She was a, I want to make sure, I think she was a five of diamonds. Let me just double check. April 15th, she was the 415 and that is the uh, six of diamonds. So here's, here's, here's more of the scripted reality. You guys ready for this? Um, So Dolores Cannon was born on April 15th. So funny, St. Louis, Missouri. Huh, that's, that's got the 314 area code. But anyway, she was born on April 15th, and that is the Six of Diamonds card. April 15th, there is the Six of Diamonds, and the Six of Diamonds, you can see the clue when you go to the tarot. What did she come here to do? This, what, this is the Six of Pentacles. Look at the picture, and it tells you what was her position. She was this person right here, she was balancing the world out by giving you her wisdom. Six is a cosmic mother or father energy. If, you have a, if you're born in the sixth, you're going to be sacrificing a lot of your life for other people. And you're probably going to get pissed about it. And if you don't get any kind of recognition, you're going to get even more, maybe even get more angry. Because is if people are willing to give you oh my god you're amazing you're amazing that is your fuel to keep you going if you're a six six birthday six life path it is this the six is the first perfect number of mathematics so it's a it's a number of mastery it's a number of legacy that's what dolores cannon left behind in her truth and she was that individual in red she was giving to people she was what was she giving wisdom a story to tell you and it's she was an influencer is, does she have one plus one equals two truth? I wouldn't say that. But she definitely had her truth that she was sharing with people. She was doing her job. Right? That's what her job was, was to be this influencer. And this is a big, this 70 is a big deal because uh, in the, the pentagonal number, 70 is the seventh pentagonal number, which is tied to the chakras. So when you see the number 70, it, it means the crown. Uh, Jordan Maxwell was, I don't actually, what was, what is Jordan Maxwell's birthday? I should know this. Let me see. The great Jordan Maxwell, who's also a JW. December 28th. Oh, he's got the, um, he's got the three of hearts card. So that's, that's a card of uh, celebration. Uh, it's a Mercury card. So it's a messenger card. Any of you that have the three, like if you have, like three is the diamagnetic pulse of light and the transverse electromagnetic wave that chases after it. So if you, if you have a flashlight and you turn on the flash, let me just show you with the, uh, with the, when you turn on this, let me get my, hold on. When you turn this light on, you see, this is the, di that, the, the source of this is the diamagnetic pulse of light and then the 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 light that follows it see what it makes this light that pushes out that's the transverse electromagnetic wave that chases after it so that's exactly what the sun does the sun blasts its masculinity onto the world stage and the tr the, the wave behind it so the sunlight has a transverse electromagnetic wave behind it and that's life And it, it gets defined by the double silly experiment where if you have an observer on the light and you say, oh, this is that, or this is this, 
<coughs> you've now defined it <coughs> and you change its parameters in, in, a, in a certain way. Yeah, Jordan Maxwell was um, uh, another amazing. I, I I got to meet him one time. I was uh, I was in Vegas. I was at the um, some simple hotel. I can't I can't remember the name of it. Um, I can't remember the name of the hotel. But I was like, I went there to speak. I was actually speaking, um, and. Uh, I think I spoke in front of five people, six people that showed up. <laughs> it was one of my first times speaking. I remember I was wearing uh, a periwinkle long sleeve shirt with a tie. No, I didn't think I had a tie on, but I was wearing like a purple shirt. And I, I was hoping to meet, I knew Jordan was going to be there. He was one of the keynote speakers. I was hoping to meet him. And as I was walking in to the hotel, he was walking out and I got my wish. And I thought it was cool, man. And he was so cool. And I was like, Jordan. And, and I, got, I ended up getting a, got, he got a picture of him. And he was super cool, man. So I got to meet him. That was pretty awesome. Uh, Woke No More is asking, what brand of hydrogen machine would you recommend? Well, the one I have is, <coughs> let me show you. is from this uh, guy, this, the guy that owns this is, his name is Steve Hydrogen, the number four health. And uh, the reason why I, the reason why I bought this machine from him is because this is the one I have because I, I just wanted to go small. I wanted to try it out. It's 800 bucks. It produces 150 uh, for hydrogen. It's, it's, I mean, it's powerful for its delivery. It's mainly for respiratory. It's for, it has, you put the tubes in here and you breathe it in. And that's the best way medicinally to heal the body is uh, by breathing it and not drinking it. Okay. Even though I do both. <clears throat> but this one right here um, is awesome. I, I turn it on at night. It's got the tubes. You can put it in water. You can make your hydrogen water. Um, but I think when I get settled into my next place, I'll probably go up to the... Um, the X900 um, and, and go with a, a more, this is 300, I think, versus five, uh, 150. And like I said, you just sit here and you breathe. I do it at night. I fall asleep. It's got three settings. I think it's like three hours or something, and I just fall asleep to it, you know, and I breathe it in while I fall asleep. I do the oxygen and the hydrogen. It's called Brown's gas, <clears throat> and that's the one I use. So, so far, it's been, it's been good. It's been, it's been really good. That's the one I would recommend you get. And you can reach out to him. He's right in Salt Lake City. He's super fast shipping. His name's Steve. You can go onto YouTube, type in Hydrogen for Health. And I had requested from him because I'm like, hey, dude, can you do a video showing the output from a flow meter on what that thing produces? And he, he made a video for me on there and did it publicly. And he showed the, the actual hydrogen meter, or I'm sorry, the, the output <coughs> of the hydrogen. And that's what sold me on it is that the... Um, it, it does a lot more. Than, I think it did 190 or something versus the, the 150 label. So, Hazel said, I met Deion Sanders in Las Vegas. He didn't ask for yours. JJOOEGG1, <laughs> uh, -E I recall you recommended a totally different machine. Yeah, I think back in the day, I was recommending the hydro, the... Um, 
The one from Japan. What's the name of the damn machine? Hydrofix, I think. Um, that one that one makes really good hydrogen water to drink. But the when when I saw the video on the uh, output to breathe it in, it doesn't it doesn't put out what it says. So I don't really recommend that one unless you're gonna get one to drink, then yeah. So <clears throat> that one's still good. Actually, Steve's on Hydrogen for Health sells them on his website, but they're about 2000 bucks. And doesn't produce the hydrogen um, through the, the breathing apparatus like it claims. So that's the reason why I went with the, um, the one that Steve makes on Hydrogen for Health. So like I said, so far, so good. Yeah, Greg, <laughs> Greg's a great guy. Hydro, he, he, he calls himself Hydrogen Man. That would be the Lord's Hydro, the Lord's machine. That one's from Japan. A very high quality machine, but it doesn't, and he, he, he will defend that it does, but Steve did, I saw, I saw the specs and then I saw the test being done on the Lords, and it just did, it doesn't it doesn't pass the flow meter test of what it claims. I think it claims 120 parts per million. It it it, it didn't or or two th was it 200? I think it was 200, and it it didn't it didn't produce 200. I think it was only 120. So, but I think Greg is an amazing individual. I have nothing but great things to say about him. Um, he's doing his job, and he's healed a lot, helped heal a lot of people. Um, so I, I, I'm a fan of his, his work. I just don't agree with the machine he uses. But again, that's just me. Steven says, I walked past Tom Cruise when I went to Dallas and didn't chase after him. Shit, I would have freaking, I, I may have went back and gone, hey, what's up, Tom? <laughs> Thomas. I know it's Thomas Cruz. <laughs> Lucy says, I thought he was anti-Brown's gas, though. Are you talking about Greg? I don't know if he is. Um, unless you're using a certain cleaner on your machine. Yeah, he's very knowledgeable. You got to use acidic acid to clean your machine at least once a month. Uh, which reminds me, I got to do that on mine. Um, because it can't, the, the metals, the titanium metal in there that produce, that helps produce the hydrogen can, you know, obviously it's like anything else. <clears throat> you need to decode Scientology. Yeah. That's going to be tied to L Ron Hubbard. <clears throat> Man, I tell you, this air condition jacks my lungs up. <clears throat> Immortal Errant says, I beat Donald Trump twice in chess last month. Okay. Yeah, Greg knows his stuff, Lucy, for sure. No denying that. Super smart guy. But I would tell him to hook up that Lord's Hydro machine to a flow meter, and you're going to see that it doesn't produce what it says it does. So that was enough for me. Velez is asking, do people hear voices that claim they are God in their heads? Of course. Nick Levine, Levine, your opinion on Millennium Kingdom already happened. I don't, I don't understand your question. All right, so 
what else can I show? All, uh, well, I, I can show you. Show you a little sneak peek on the full D. This one will be exclusively on Patreon, but uh, I'll show you a, a few slides. If you want to watch the full presentation breakdown, it will be on my Patreon. So if you want to support this great research, I greatly appreciate it. There's a great community over there, like-minded people. There's no arguing, no debating. It's all about love in there. It's a beautiful place. If you like drama, it's not the right place for you. It's not dirty laundry. It's just love and all about just love is allowing and unconditional love. Okay, so this this is a very interesting decode I have coming out. I, I think this is a very, very interesting and it's tied of course to the full card, the full card being card zero and maybe the hidden aspect of the 22 and you know, we're all, this is all of us, the fool. You're, you're the fool, especially in your springtime when you're born into this world and you, you think you're, you know, you get to a certain age. I mean, I got married when I was 19. Can you imagine that? I got married <laughs> when I was 19. I was in the military and I was, I got my first orders to go overseas during Desert Storm. And I met this girl and I literally just got married so quick and I thought I knew what everything. I was the. I look back. I, it was. It was the fool playing me out. Like, didn't know what it feels like to this. Didn't know what it feels like for that. And uh, I just thought for sure, but I was playing out the fool character. We all do. And you know what does it mean in our reality? You know, like what is what does all this kind of stuff mean in our reality? Well, when you start to break down theology, which I love doing. You get into the Torah. Torah is 19. Okay. The word Torah is 19. Tied to the Taurus field. Santos went into this quite a bit on many SD codes. And you can see that in the context of this story, and remember the word Lord is serious. Okay. And the Lord God for man of the dust of the ground. So you have now a layer of Prometheus, because Prometheus is tied to Pluto, which is tied to the, the earth and the underworld. And you have the breath of life and man became... So I'm, I, throughout this, this whole decode, I break down all the major words of this scripture. And the very big one that stood out was the soul. Man became a living soul. Remember that Gemini is 19, Master is 19. Sirius sits in the sign of Gemini. Gemini is the twins, which is you and the Spirit of God, the doppelganger. Man became a living son. This is why the little baby sitting on the white horse. These are heavily influenced by Jewish mysticism. Okay. Master being 19, Gemini is 19, Battery is 19. But it goes on to talk about death. This is because we return back to what this story is saying source is, which is the sun. So from life you will be born into, but death you will return. And you can see how the spelling of the word sun, one of the ancient archaic spellings, soul, which is soul. Soul is 13. And this is soul. Genesis. The book of Genesis. Genesis meaning the seed, the beginning. Okay? The beginning was the sun. And it wants to create a reality and it creates mankind which faces death. And this 13th card is the death card. This is why 13 is tied to life and death and what 13 is tied to pi and phi, 1.3, 1.61 1 and 3.14. Okay. This right here. So that's, that's just kind of a little sneak peek. I have so much more uh, to go on that. that that's going to be an amazing decode. So if you, um, if you want to become a member, I appreciate that. You're going to get all this stuff as your membership.
All you need is love. Oh yeah, Jup uh, Jessica, <coughs> Jessica asking about Jupiter. Jupiter is 27, like religion, sports, currency, vampire, thalamus. Jupiter is the only celestial in the canopy with the great red spot, has the all-seeing eye on it. So there is a lot of aspects of the uh, great Olympian Zeus being tied to running this reality as well. Velez is asking about decoding Tetragrammaton. Tetragrammaton, I've decoded so many times. Tetragrammaton is the number 47 in numerology, just like scripted reality. Tetragrammaton in the English is the 166, and the 166 is the hierarchy of the 66, 66 books of the Bible. Okay. Tetra meaning four. Four blood types. Yeah, Desert Storm. I was over there. I enlisted in uh, right out of high school. I graduated in 91. There was a recruiter at my high school. There was a few of my friends that enlisted, and uh, I didn't want to go to college. Um, and I was, I got out of the JW organization at 16. So I was in my senior year. I was 17. So I just got out. So I was like on this, I was on this like adventure streak at that point. I was like, you know, well, now what can I do? And it was just like the, the Air Force appealed to me. I went into the Air Force and I literally was, I signed up right away. And I went to basic training in San Antonio, Texas. I went to school as a mechanic uh, heavy duty equipment mechanic in Rantoul, Illinois, right outside of Chicago. Was there for like nine months, and that's where I met my first wife and got married and went overseas and got my orders to go overseas. I was stationed in England my entire time, went over to Turkey and Iraq. It was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, that was in 90, no, I was in London. 92, 93, 94. Yeah. <clears throat> Most Mosif Joseph asking me if I've done a decode on Mormonism. Um, I have in my uh, Sound of Crypto decoded. If you go check that one out. Um, let me see if I can. I don't know what is up with my freaking search engine tonight. So if you just go to the magnifying glass here, <coughs> sound of crypto. Yeah, it's this one right here. Uh, this one has all these ridic all this ridiculousness with the characters, Mel Gibson and all the ridiculous scripted reality. But then it has the um, <coughs> the Mormonism there. And Mormonism is tied to Sirius because I in the sky is 37, which is tied to the Jack. And Jack is the prince or princess, which is tied to Jesus. That's why it's the letter J in the J. And this 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 entire decode was all about uh, the, the whole scripted reality and the Harmon brothers being tied to Jesus and the Latter-day Saints, the LDS and... The Angel Studios having the Jack of Clubs. It was they they actually this whole this whole decode had all the Jacks, the Jack of Diamonds, Jack of Clubs, uh, the the Jack of Spades. It had them all. It covered all the freaking Jacks. It was just funny, this whole thing. And it was Angel Studio, which, which was a entertainment industry, of course, <sighs> tied to the Fifty and the Tin Man and all that stuff. The Wizard of Oz.
Oh yeah, it is. It's just so my 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 solar return has officially it's two minutes expired. It's 105. I was born at 103. Steven's asking, what city was I born in? Putnam, Connecticut. Putnam. Putnam equals 28. Lucifer equals 20. I have so many connections to Lucifer. It's just so ridiculous. And Jesus. I was born on 2-4. Jesus is 24. I was my my you go look at my birth certificate. I was six pounds, six ounces. That's 66. That's the Bethlehem latitude, longitude. It's ridiculous. The uncanniness of my, my birth time and my birth, it's just so, it's Jesus and Lucifer. This is why I can't help but continually say that my, my life is, and it's the phoenix. I mean, I have five phoenixes on my arm. My parents had a Pontiac Phoenix in 1976, 1977, a silver one with red interior. I mean, I got all these Phoenixes before I met Jason from Archex. We ended up doing a thing on the Phoenix. I mean, he's a big on the Phoenix. What the hell's going on here? The Phoenix tied to the sun. I got the, the, the my logo. This is why I put this. This is the sun. The guy who, Robert Harvey Ball, who created this thing, was, was lived in Worcester, Massachusetts, 20 minutes from my birth city. <laughs> The guy who tattooed this on my hand, his name, the tattoo artist, which I didn't pick, his name was Leonardo. Leo. Yeah, I'm serious. My whole entire existence has been scripted from beginning to end, man, to this current moment in time. The whole thing, the whole shebang. I mean... Folks, let me let me just show you another ridiculous. A, a, it's a silly one. It's just it's just silly. <laughs> so silly. Tetragrammaton, the Yodé Vahe, forty-seven in the Chaldean. My birth card is the forty-seventh card in the deck. It's the one sixty-six in the A through Z English, and I was born. I was born in an address, the very, like when I was a baby and my parents took me home, they lived in a apartment building. It was, it was a two, it was a um, two side by side. It was a brick. It was very old. The address, 983 Riverside Drive. I kid you not. My parents bore me into this world they lived at 983 Riverside Drive, and it's the freaking 166 prime number. What? <laughs> it's so... I mean, I'm throwing it all out there. Like, I never... I don't... I, this is the first time I ever shared that, but it's... I can show you so much more. My life... My, my mother's middle name... Okay? My mother's middle name is Marie... My father's middle name is Joseph. I'm not even kidding you. M Marie and Joseph, Mary and Joseph, hello. Seriously, I'm absolutely serious. This is the comedy to my life. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. My mom is, her middle name is Marie. My dad's middle name is Joseph. Yeah, that's how that's how funny my life is. That's how funnily scripted my life is. I can't even have this conversation with my family because they they, they they don't like look at me like I'm a de like what are you talking about? Like don't you get that? Don't you see your your middle name's Marie, your husband's name is middle name is Joseph. That's Mary and Joseph. <laughs> and you have a son named Jason. <laughs> it's so funny my life, folks. It's a joke. That's why I'm nobody, I'm nothing. I'm just a hobo, man. I'm just surrendering to the code, having the time of my life, having fun in my life, that's it. I'm suggesting that you do the same thing as well. Be the star of your show, man. This is what's your question, 73. 73 is you're on television, be the star of your show. Look at the bottom of the deck, 37th card in the deck, the eye in the sky, the ace of cups. This, it never ends. So it doesn't matter, this, go out next time, how do I word this? Go tell God what you think about this reality and see if it reacts to you. It won't. It doesn't care what you think. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you going and trying to go talk to, like, there's a bunch of ants. Next time you see an anthill, 
Go stand in front of the ant hill and tell the ants what you think. See if they respond to what you think. Start to talk to the ants and tell them your opinion. Tell them what you don't like about life. See if the ants change any of their course of how they react, how they behave. They're not going to give a shit what you think. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, are you serious, Logan? I am serious. <clears throat> Utility Maximus. I get this question a lot. What is the benefit to decoding your life? Why would you want to do that? <clears throat> so let's set aside, just for a minute, let's set aside that your life is scripted. Forget about your life is predestined, all that maybe nonsense to you, like, eh, okay. So let's, let's assume you're in complete control of your life, okay? Cool. So let's use a car as an example. When you get behind the wheel of the car, right, you jump into a Porsche twin turbo. You've never driven one before. You get into the car, you grab the wheel and you know you want to give it a little bit so you start going with the thing and it's whew, it's powerful right you don't you don't know how to go 70 miles an hour around the turns but it wants to you got to learn the drive style of the car you you're, you're going to have your own drive style but then you got to learn the speed and the precision of how you can turn or how fast you can do this and what it what its capabilities are the learning of the car is the same format as the learning of your code. What you're programmed to do, what you're not programmed to do. What your strengths are, what your weaknesses are. The benefit of decoding yourself is all of that and more. Is You see, you're being, you are a... When I pick up a pen, <coughs> if I want to go right, I am the master of the pen. I get to control what I want to write on the piece of paper. The pen doesn't have a choice. It cannot, it can yell and scream at me. If this thing could talk, it'd be like, please, I don't want to work today. I'm going to call in sick today. No, you ain't calling into sick. You're going to, you're going to do what I say. I'm the master of you. This is a very silly example, but the pen has to abide by my instructions, by what I want to tell it. The same, I feel the reality is the same way. Look, if you get into the, behind the wheel of a car, the car is subordinate to you. If you mash the gas, it has to go. If you hit the brakes, it has to stop. There is no difference between that example of the car and this pen as, as in the supernatural God, whatever you want to call it, using you as the instrument, the instrument. You're going to do what it says. And if you don't, maybe, just maybe, if there is a way to say, I'm not going to do that, you'll be punished for it to get you on track. I'm saying that's purely theoretical. I'm not saying it's true. But the voice in your head, that owns you. You don't own that. You can, there's no way to prove that you own it. See, good luck trying to prove free will. You, it's absolutely impossible to prove that you have free will. It is impossible. You can't prove it. You, if you say, well, I'll just, I'll just, I'll show you. I'll go get up and go to 7-Eleven and go to the store. That's no, that's not proof. So there's no way to prove you have free will, but there's no way to disprove you have it. So we'll be at a checkmate. But I know that this pen doesn't have free will. The cells in your body, you think your immune system has a choice? You think the liver has a choice? You think the stomach has a choice when you chow down that pizza? You think the stomach says, I'm, I, I'm on vacation today? 
Hell no. It may be broken. You may not be producing enough stomach acid and you'll start to have digestion issues. And that may happen, yes. But in a working, capable body, when you eat your pizza or you eat your spaghetti or you eat whatever it is you eat, you tell the stomach and the saliva kicks in and it's a machine. This is a machine and it doesn't have a choice. You think it stops there? You think that you're in control of your reality? No, the voice in your head is what narrates and runs your life. And if you get off course, just like it was interesting, the adjustment bureau, that in numerology equals 73. Terrence Stamp, the actor, which is also in Yes Man, saying yes to everything. Why, why was the whole story of Yes Man saying yes to everything? Because the game needs players. I'll sign up for this. I'll sign up for that. I'll go do this. I'll go do, I'll go help. Yeah, I'll do it. It's all, yes, 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 yes. Because it's, the spirit wants to, it wants to experience this reality through. You're the pen, folks. You don't have the choices you think you have. You don't have to agree with me on that. I'm not asking you to agree. What I will ask you to do is just consider what I'm, what I'm saying here is that God uses you if you want to use God. And I don't even like using that word because it's so vanilla. <coughs> it uses you. And you're going to get used up. And when you look at this reality, it's like, it's very hostile. It's very unwelcoming. Eventually, one day you're going to die and probably through that through that lineage of death, you're going to experience a lot of suffering. And you're going to experience a lot of heartbreak. You're going to experience a lot of pain. What's the point of that? Well, then you would justify it by, well, that's the teacher and it gives you this. And absolutely. But wh why do you have to go through it? What's the point of that? And you got to, again, think about this. This pen right here will go through some kind of torture. It may get dry, like having dry skin. It's like you have to put a lighter on there to get the ink to come out. And the pen's like, I'm not coming out today. And you're like, oh, yes, you are. And you put the lighter on there and you force it to come out. And now it writes better. And like, oh, the pen's working again. La, 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 la. And then it gets dead. The ink gets way down and it's dead. The, it, the pen's going to die one day. This thing's going to die one day. And then I'm just going to throw it out and I'm going to get a new one. And that's God throwing you out and getting a new human being. A spirit enters into a new vessel because it doesn't need you anymore. That's life. And that's not a bad thing. That's just the way it is. That's my final answer. I, I, I've done so many decodes. I've done enough research on this. That's my final answer. You, you don't have to like it. You don't have to agree with me. Don't care. But that's just the way I see this reality. It's, it's angry, it's irritable, it's lovely, it's beautiful, it's everything and nothing at the same time. And you see, most people in this reality are programmed to fulfill their life with dirty laundry. They love the killing, they love people losing, they love seeing death, they love seeing drama. That's what gives them fulfillment. Because ladies and gentlemen, if you had just like a bland slate of life, there's no value. There's no energy exchange in that. But when you see the tabloids of like, the building blew up and 50,000 people died, you're draw instantly, oh my God, what happened? You're drawn to it like a sucker fish. Because that's what creates this reality is the pull towards the negativity. That's what gives the, the, the edge in life. You're not draw, like the, 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 the mild meh kind of energy. You're not, you're not drawn to that. My number, listen, the proof is, was in the pudding with my analytics on my Super Bowl, Super Bowl 58, it was the number one. First, it was leave the world behind, which was dirty laundry. That became number one. And then the Super Bowl 58, that became number one. And I'm, why are nonsensical things, which they really are, why are they number ones? Because that tells me loud and clear what people are interested in. People are interested in drama. And the dirtier 
the darker, the more they will be interested in it. Except for you. I know there's always those of you that say, not me. I don't own a TV, but I just sit there and stare at my phone all day long. You'll justify, oh, I don't own a TV. I haven't had a TV in 10 years. Well, good for you. You would have in 10 for you, but you're freaking sitting in front of your cell phone. You're on social media and you're on Twitter and you're tweeting and tweeting and all the other shit. But you don't have a TV though, so you'll justify, well, look at me, I don't have a TV. Great, good for you. <clears throat> That's just me being fun, folks. I'm not, you may be like, oh, Logan's an asshole. I'm just, I'm just having fun. <clears throat> Woke No More is asking a question. I'm curious, if there is no free will, <clears throat> why would we question anything? It's a good question. That's a good question. Maybe to throw you off? To question the aspect of having free will and not having free will? I, I don't know. It's a good question. But again, you know, look, I'm not some, uh, I don't even want to use, like I love, I'm a huge fan of Werner Erhard. And uh, I was just listening to his lecture again. Um, and he, he says in his lecture, he's like, I'm not proclaiming to give the truth to you, but I'm also not a guy in a diner. Meaning I'm not just some schmuck giving you information and regurgitating it from something that I heard or read. No, ladies and gentlemen, my whole life for the past 10 years, and I'm not even exaggerating, for over 10 years now, 12 years now, all I have been doing day in and day out, not every day, but the majority, I have been doing research upon research upon research upon research of decoding this reality. And if you're not somebody who decodes, if you're like somebody light on that and then may, I wouldn't expect you to understand this, what I'm about to tell you, but my research, the research that I've been, I shouldn't even say mine, the research that's been given to me clearly shows the patterns that mankind doesn't have a choice. They don't have a choice. Now, if you're willing to kind of tinker or kick the can around a little bit about that, like, okay, well, if man doesn't have a choice, what's the, what's the pur purpose in life? You're being used. What's the purpose of the pen? Oh, I think I'm going to write an essay tonight. And so the pen's like, choose me, choose me, choose me. And you pick the blue pen instead of the red pen. And the blue pen feels so special. Ah, oh, ha, ha. He picked me over you, red. You don't get to get used tonight. And your favorite pen. Some of you, you have your favorite pair of jeans. And if you're, all your jeans could talk to you, you probably have a pair of jeans that feel so neglected and they probably have a ton of trauma because you don't pay any attention to that pair of jeans. You have a favorite pair of jeans and that favorite pair of jeans, if it could talk to you, is like loves you to death because you take it everywhere you go. You wear it all the time. But that, that other pair of jeans in your closet is neglected and it feels trauma. This is how our reality works. If jeans could talk, if shoes could talk. Some of you women, and I'm just using this for an example, some of you women have clothes in your closet that still have the tags on them and they've been in there for years and you don't even pay any attention. Those poor clothes sitting in your closet, like, hey, you bought me a long time ago. Why are you not wearing me out? But see, clothes can't talk. <laughs> but if they could, that's what they'd be saying. There should be a movie on that. The, the clothes, like, they've the, the, done Sausage Party and the fun stuff. But if clothes could talk, what would your what would your closet say? You know, are you using things up evenly, or you play fav you play favorites in your life? You have a favorite favorite pair of jeans, you have a favorite brand that you use your cell phone. You're probably brand conscious, and you're probably a brand loyal. You're just a machine, folks. That's exactly this reality and how it completely operates. You feed the machine. Machine is 24, Jesus is 24. You think that's an accident? What do you think Jesus is all about? It's a machine. Welcome to the machine. You know, I've looked at this reality up and down. Could it be possible that the greatest, 
One of the greatest stories ever told in the Bible is the biggest trap ever told. I'm not saying that's true now, but what if the most bulletproof story, the most ironclad story is the actual story that will lead you off into reincarnation. <laughs> and a lot of you don't want to come back. It's really interesting. See, these, these artists, like I did a, I've done Pink Floyd, Welcome to the Machine, Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, I've done three. Wish you were here. <laughs> three different Pink Floyd decodes showing that the band members didn't have a choice. I supported it. I'm not gonna say prove. I supported it like I've supported Twisted Sister, Prince, Michael Jackson, Def Leppard, Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Twisted Sister. They didn't have a choice. Now, unless somebody can come and refute that, which I'm not asking you, I don't want anybody to do that because it's, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Yeah, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, 1973. This is What's Your Question, 73. Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon came out on March 1st, which is the uh, Nine of Spades card, which is tonight's episode, the Nine of Spades. Dark Side of the Moon. This, this nine of spades is, is card number 48. Can be card number 48. The great red spot is 48. Jupiter. The all-seeing eye. See, a lot of you are influenced by the great Jason over at Archaics. You see a lot of Aarons and AIX. And I think it's interesting, the influence we have from people. I think it's pretty awesome. So Face Diaper says, the fake copycat AIX. I, see, this is an idea from Jason. And again, I'm not saying it's wrong. But how, how could this reality be a copycat? When I go out to the ocean... I see the birds and the beauty in nature. How how would you ever say that's a copycat? I don't I don't know how you would do that. Forbidden, if you can't hear me, it'll be on your end because uh, I haven't changed any of my parameters unless I get somebody else telling me they can't hear me. Yeah, forbidden. I would probably say you have to prob you have to, well, you can't even hear me anyway, so I don't know what's the point. <laughs> yeah. I That's the other one. I remembered this one. Here you go. Let's get rid of the English.
everybody knows this axiom. As above, so below. 58, which is the same as, huh, which is the same as, huh. <laughs> so what is the as above, so below? The puppet master and its remote control. See, the 27 is remote. 27 is remote. Which is a vampire. And the remote is the thalamus. And the thalamus is where heaven's at, which controls currency. And the currency, the main contributors of currency is religion, sports, Okay, even when you say uh, 270, you're gonna get 41. 41 is the 13th prime number. 41 is tied to Elohim. Elohim is 41. Okay. <clears throat> Final destination, fifty eight. Good one, Jason. <clears throat> You know, again, it's Super Bowl 58. I mean, is there, is that, what is that telling on the world stage? Is some big shit coming down the pike? All right, I'm, I'm kind of peering out. I got to eat. So I think I'm going to wrap this one up. Let me just shuffle these taros and, and get a, a, a little collective. Shared a lot tonight. We had a lot of great conversations. A lot of you, thank you so very much for all your um, your comments, your, your questions. I know I did a lot of tangents tonight. That's an interesting uh, topic, like NPC. What's an NPC? Where did, who, who came up with that? Someone tell Forbidden that they probably have to log in and log out because their audio is not working or restart their computer. Anyway, I'm about to end this soon anyway, so. Face diaper, I just really encourage you not to call people sheeple. Why? You were once that before too. Why, why do you have to call people sheeple? Just curious. I'm not saying you're wrong, but <clears throat> what makes you superior over other people to call them sheeple? I mean, it's definitely not a, uh, it's definitely a derogatory comment. Yeah, but it's an unawakened avatar. You used to be one of those too, though, right? I don't know. I don't like using those words. That's just me, though. Sheeple and it's just like, these are just, I think we need to rise above that as a species. If you want to, if you want to, if you, if you will. But that's my opinion. I'm, I'm not saying you have to, but I'm not trying to point, I'm not trying to uh, face diaper. It's just interesting. Your avatar is kind of funny. I, I'm, I'm laughing with you on that. Um, but I, I just think that we need to write, like, I'm not a fan of calling people elites. I don't do that. I'm not saying that you don't, you have to, again, I'm not asking you or telling you or informing you or saying these are absolutes in your book. But I, I certainly am not going to call anybody elites. There are no elite. You're the elite. 
I think people are in the habit of calling organizations or people elite. And when they do that, they become subordinate. Just like when somebody goes to an AA meeting and they stand up and they say, I'm, a, I'm an alcoholic. No, that you're, you are, I used to be an alcoholic. Stop being a subordinate. When you say I'm an alcoholic, you're subordinate to that. When you say I used to be, you're now not a subordinate. Now you're in the top position. Now you've overcome it. And you showing up at that meeting is clarifying that you have overcome it. Logic and common sense to me. But I think that, um, I think that, uh, I think that we're, we're coming a long way, but I really also think that people are really programmed habitually to say certain words. And that's just the way it is. I'm not, again, this is all predestination anyway. So, but I think that if there is such a thing as free will, let's tinker with that idea. Then, you know, maybe using sheeple in these derogatory, like, like I'm not like Santos, people calls people globe tarts. I'm, I'm just not a fan of that. There's nothing positive about that. Nothing. N there is absolutely nothing utopian about calling people names. That's all dystopian. I don't know how you can claim to be somebody that you're a fan of utopia when you're, when you're using dystopian behaviors. I just, I don't know how that works. It just doesn't make sense. You do you. If you want to believe in whatever you want to believe in, you go do that. I'm going to go do me. I'm going to actually go on offense, which scores points. Defense doesn't really score points. So I'm going to go on offense and I'm going to score points. I'm going to go be the best devil I can be. I'm going to be the star of my movie instead of being an extra in yours. I don't need to defend. I would suggest all of you to you know, maybe take a look at this. Don't call the people that consider like you're the elite. Unless you don't want to be. I mean, that's completely up to you. There are no elites running anything. They are being used just like you and I. There are no elites. No. There are no elites. You're the elite. All right. Bong Father, what do you got, man? Is this a question and answer? Yeah. I mean, tonight I've been doing a lot of ranting, but what do you got for a question? I think that uh, I think if, if we if we if we all focus on gratitude, eliminate the mainstream from your life, realizing there are no elites, you're the elite, you're the star of the show. It'll really you know move your reality into a, a better a, a more pleasurable, better outcome. And if you end up moving towards that, then you're supposed to. But if you want to stay in the quarrels and you want to stay in the debates and you love watching the drama and you love hearing people like how many of you, somebody had mentioned uh, bro Sanchez and Jason have an it. How many of you went on there and actually loved li or listened to them, him ranting? Like how many of you, like that's drama. A lot of you did go listen to that banter. What does it matter? Because people love the, they love the dirty laundry. They love it. <clears throat> Bong Father's asking, how can I decode it all? Well, 
you got to start somewhere. So start with numerology, start with the spoken word. If you're a basic person who wants to start uh, decoding, you, you go to, I use this website right here. Um, and I, you got to go to other and I go to Chaldean and I, I use Chaldean. That's, you don't have to use any other cipher, but you start with your name, right? Start with your name. Start with your, this is my birth certificate name. But then you have to add on your mother's maiden name, right? <clears throat> this is my full name right here in numerology. This is where I would start. And then you figure out what the number 80 means. So then you would go to numberempire.com and you would type in the number 80. And is 80 a prime number? No, but it's a composite number. But what's the next prime number line? 83, which is the 23rd prime number. Then you got to know what the 23 means. You can see the 83 is the 431 prime number. My last name's Pi. Yet. See how scripted my reality is? That's a permutation of Pi. Right? <clears throat> but I would start with decoding who you are and why you're here. I did a decode, how to decode yourself. I have a course coming out. It'll be affordable for anybody to join in and utilize the course. You'll never need to get an inter You'll never need to get anybody to interpret your charts again unless you want somebody to do some advanced layers. Decode your kids. You can decode your partner to understand, understand them. What's up, Christine, from the great state of Washington? Grateful and thankful for you. Thanks for showing up. You've always been here uh, from the very beginning. I think from the very beginning you started. So I just have a lot of love and respect to you. So I thank you so much for continually showing up, supporting this great research. All right. So we're going to, we're going to, Get to the tail end of this now. We're going to do some tarot cards and we're going to kind of get a little message here for what's your question 73. Um, we talked a lot about, we talked a lot of, about a lot of stuff uh, for this broadcast. A lot of stuff. I, I went on a lot of tangents. I know I probably should have answered more questions than I, but anyway, I hope you had fun with this today. Tonight's cards on the left and right of me. To the uh, right of me is the Eight of Spades, my birth card. That's today's date, February 4th. And to the left of me was the day of the Nine of Spades, which is where we started Saturday, February 3rd. <coughs> okay. Uh, and um, these are going to form the number 17. And 17 is the seventh prime number and the fourth prime number and yada, yada, yada. Right. So what is the main message for all of you, I'm going to, I'm going to try to tighten this down and me being the conduit, me being the catalyst, what's the main message for this group here that's been here. And if you've been here from the very beginning, thank you so very much. Um, but what's the main message moving forward for those that are in this broadcast right now? And you may be watching this recording and this, these cards may be just specifically for you. They may be just for you. I don't know. But let's see what the first card is. I always just kind of tap my fingers in the cards, it's kind of my methodology, kind of tap my fingers in the cards and just go with my fingers direct me. I'm not in control of it. So it's going to pull the card up that I'm supposed to pull out. And the very first card... <laughs> oh, man. It's my birth card. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> Card number 57 slash 58. Truman Show, remote control. I have the, this is, this is the, see the comedy in my life? Really? <laughs> Today is February 4th, which is the card to the right of me. Which is the eight of spades, eight of swords, trapped and limited. This card is, you're, you're, you're inside of a scripted reality. You're not in control of it. <laughs> so that's what my message is here to you. So to surrender to it and let, just like the pen, the pen is like, hey, do whatever you want to do. Like, you think this pen has a choice? Do whatever you want to do. 
Write whatever you want to draw, whatever you want to draw. You can create magic with it. You can create a beautiful scenery. You can write vulgar words. But the pen doesn't have a choice. You don't have a choice. You're the pen. Trapped and limited. You're not, You ha there's limits. So, what's the next comical? Let's see if we can keep the comedy going, shall we? Let's see what the next message is here for what's your question number 73. Oh. Now, obviously, people are like, whoa, wait a minute, trapped and limited in death. What does this mean? Well, it could mean that there's death coming. I mean, hasn't there been a lot of death? Maybe it's my turn. I don't know. But this doesn't mean that it could be physical death. I mean, Taylor Swift, the Super Bowl and all stuff, she was like, it's the 13. It's all about the 13. It's the M and the 13th letter. Well, this is the 13th card. See, this character is the Grim Reaper, which clears the board. Harvest is the gold. Like when the farmer goes out to the, 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 the vegetables and the trees to pick, he's harvesting the crop. Well, what do you think this, this character does? Brings out the sickle and harvests the crop. As horrific as it is. Because death gives life. And it's an, it's an ecosystem. So we have trapped and limited. And we have death. And I mean, these are tied right to the Super Bowl. They're all 58 is 5 plus 8, which is 13. <sighs> all right, let's get one. Let's get another. One. I have no idea where this is going, but let's get another card here randomly. So like, what, like, let's see if we, uh, this is. Ugh. Anyways, I'm getting a little tired. I think I'm kind of rambling. Wow. OK, well, <sighs> geez, it's not. Uh, the, the card of the nightmare, which is the card to the left of me. So how do I pull? Folks, you saw how I was pulling these things. I ain't just. Those two cards are on the left and right hand side of me, which, are, which is tonight's broadcast. The nine of spades is the nine of swords, the card on your left, the card on the left side of the wall. That's the February 3rd card, which is how I started this transaction, or this transmission. And then the card to the right of me is my birth card, the eight of spades, which is the eight of swords, which is these two cards. I just literally pulled the eight of swords and the eight, of, the nine of swords with the death card in the middle. Jeez. The nightmare. Card 50, card 58 or 59. Well, I don't know what the hell this is going, but this is like, if you got this in a reading man, shit's about to get real. God, all right, well, let's, let's, let's do one more. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Card 50, <clears throat> card 49 and card 50. Well, we have some light at the end of the tunnel here, but this is another 13 because this is the king of cups. The king of cups is the king of hearts. The king of hearts is the 13th card in the, in the deck. We had the reference to the death card. The king of cups is card number 50. 50 is tied to Bitcoin. 50 Bitcoin mined on January 3rd, 2009, when they first released the Genesis Block Zero. In God We Trust is 50. All right, that just mixed it up a little bit. Let's let's pull another one. So, I mean, the King of Cups is normally he's, it's tin. It's, it's tied to Jupiter, but it's also tied to Sirius. It's tied to the dollar bill, tied to the all-seeing eye. Okay, let's pull one more. So you guys know that I'm not. So we have the, the Wheel of Fortune, card number 10. Tied to the house of Capricorn. Remember, Capricorn is Kronos, and Kronos right now is in Aquarius, but in Capricorn, you have Pluto there. So Pluto's in Capricorn, and Saturn's in Aquarius. Right now. This is the card number 10, the Wheel of Fortune. Normally when this card comes out, it's like, oh, you know, like spinning the wheel to determine your fate. Normally a card reader will say this is a very positive outcome. But 
what is this what does this mean here because we have one two three four that was card number five i'm going to do seven cards to match the chakras <clears throat> and then i'll give the final interpretation uh, of what I think this means. Card number six. Wow. It's card number 55. This is another card. This is tied to uh, Bitcoin as well. This is card 55. It's tied right to Bitcoin. Bitcoin January. This is the January 9th card. Bitcoin, uh, the first release was on January 9th. This is the January 9th card. This is also May 1st card. May 1st is the founding of the Bavarian Illuminati. This is tied to the, uh, the, the game of life. This is, this, is, this is like leaving the world behind. This is, see those people throwing their swords down? They're like, I'm, not, I'm done. Five fingers, five toes, five senses. So I think I know where this is going, but let's go. We have one more card. That's six. That was in the sixth position. Which would, that was tied to the third eye. This, this five of swords. Five tied to the third eye. This one. Leave the world behind. But let's see the last and final card for this. What's your question number 73? <laughs> Drum roll. Wow. The 37th card in the deck. The ace of cups. Tied to eye in the sky. Tied to Sirius. You see that dove flying down into the cup, which has the big W on it, which is the M. If you flip it upside down, it's the M. See the M? The W. Water wave. 23rd. The, this, is, this is the cup that never ends. Because the eye in the sky, it, it, it never allows that cup to be, to be empty. Let me just add these up. Give me one second. See if we can get a number output for this. 37 plus 55 plus 10 plus 50 plus 58 plus 13. Plus 59. 282. <coughs> 282. I'm going to go check the mathematics on this. Let's see if we get a bridge. I don't think that's a prime number. 283 61st prime number. That's Prometheus. Okay. I don't really have anything mathematically for this. I'd have to do a little more investigation, a little more research. But what we have is, we have seven cards. <coughs> we have trapped and limited at the beginning. And at the end, we had... The eye in the sky, this is tied to Rubidium, the number 37, and um, the never-ending game of life. So we have Trapped and Limited, yes. Are we gonna, is this saying you're gonna be free with the leaving the world behind? In between the interim of that, you had a lot of movement here with a serious change. We had some. We have. We have the eight of spades or the eight of swords, the nine of swords, death in the middle, and after that holocaust, after that nightmare, we had the king of cups. Which this is the card of the Tin Man, looking for its heart. The elimination of that, spinning the wheel, leaving the world behind. Now this one really is so dynamic with its presentation. All right, I'm going to clarify with the cards of illumination. I'm going to clarify the biggest disruptor in here, which is the death card. Let me clarify this death card and see what this thing's talking about because I'm kind of, I have an idea. Death card. The death card. Two of spades. This is two of spades. Two of spades is card 41. 41 is the 13th prime number. Wow. So we had the 13th card. And the two of spades comes out to clarify that. And it's the 41st card in the deck. And 41 is the 13th prime number leading back to the death card. And this is 41. And 41 is tied to Elohim. 
there's some there's serious change coming there's a lot folks there's going to be a lot of my my message to all of you with this is the more you're willing to eliminate the mainstream from your life like if you just shut off the mainstream television or your social media you're and you're not willing to look at it anymore you'll move into peace because when you move into a more peaceful environment you'll have a change with the wheel of fortune and that change will to leave the world behind to walk away to not have any more attachments and when the attachments are are left behind you'll have this overflow of abundance now i'm not saying you're going to have millions of dollars come into your life i'm not saying that at all but cha- this these these two cards are clearly representing massive change it it could indicate that the trap that we're in which has a limitation on your free will access will be somewhat removed and this could play into theology and i had talked about this i want to share this again one day to like in in the context of theology it says that one day to god is a thousand days we sleep for half the day we awake for the well i shouldn't even say half the day but we're asleep and then we're awake is that the same way god works where it when it goes to sleep it's it's really not the same as being awake like when you're asleep are you in control of your reality or are you not in control of it when you're asleep you lose control and maybe what you were cuz a lot of times when you have dreams they're based upon what you watched like you had a nightmare because you watched this show on television and so maybe when you're sleeping you're being influenced <coughs> by something during the daytime but when you're awake it's a completely different story when you wake up you start to daydream which i think is why this 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 night of cups comes in because the night of cups is a card of of love the king of love and it's also the aspect of like looking to do and create on the world stage after this there's a burden here there's a burden here there's definitely i mean to get these cards in sequence and to have them both on the same sides of the wall and the reason why i chose these cards on either the left and right hand side is because they represent february 3rd and february 4th so like to pull both of these cards in the tarot during a reading is very uncanny but they were pulled the death card sits in the middle so there is some massive change going on here but at the other end we had two very very positive cards coming out with the king of cups and the 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 wheel of fortune which to me clearly indicates a change in productivity a change in love but that's going to require a lot of releasing your attachments This is going to require if you want the the if you want to have the cup overflowing there has to be a release of attachments and the attachments could be a lot of your habits the attachments could be a lot of your programming Again ladies and gentlemen I'm a fan of nihilism Nihilism is eliminating your beliefs from everything that you've been programmed with And I know that would even sneak into the decoding that I've done yes of course it would So again if I if I wake up tomorrow and I had a lobotomy like they drilled into my head and I just don't remember anything that's bliss Because then I'm like okay I live 2 blocks from the beach what am I going to do today Well I I don't remember anything Well that beach looks pretty damn it's appetizing So I'm going to go to the beach and it's overflowing with beauty and harmony and bliss But in order to feel that without any blemishes you got to walk away and this card's been coming up this is this card is tied to I'll spit you out of my mouth yep 
So I just think the message here is very crystal clear. I think there's a lot of you, or I should say a lot of us that are holding on to, holding on to ideas that have, are keeping you trapped and limited. They're causing a lot of nightmares in your life. You need to put those to rest. You need to allow the natural cycle of life to remove them, not to hold on, to be a lover of life, to have fortunate outcomes, but you must lay down your sword and walk away. And that takes a lot of courage. And I think the reward will be the cup that overfloweth. One final message here. I'm gonna do one more tarot card, one final message for the overall scheme of this. What's your question, number 73? I mean, the uncanniness to pull the eight and nine of swords, which are on the, both on the right and left-hand sides of the wall here is whew, pretty amazing. Final message for all of you great decoders, chronologists. Big, again, big shout out to Jason from Archaics, Jordan from Waters Above, Rise TV, um, Santos Bonacci. Final message for all of you great decoders. What's your question 73? The final message. The King of Wands. This is card number 35 slash 36. Remember what 36 is. Operating system. Operating system, 369. And then on top of that, we have, you know, Jesus Christ equals 36, the King of Wands, the King of the Mind. But it's also tied to the number 26 because this is the King of Clubs and the King of Clubs is card 26, the infinity symbol. So clearly... I would say, I mean, this is taking control. The King of Wands is the master of its mental realm. Are you the master of your mental realm? That's the question. Card number 35 slash 36. If you count the fool once or twice. 35 is simulation. This is also indicating there is a new sim. I mean, this has been an ongoing thing, a new simulation coming in whatever that's going to look like. Whatever that's going to look like. So I'm just going through your comments. Thank you so very much for all of you. This is spiritual death coming. Yeah. I mean, you could say that too, right? The swords represents your spirituality. There could be some spiritual death here, but the awakening inside of you is going to provide a new layer of, of reality, but it will requ require, I think, the, it will require of the releasing of attachments. That's kind of what I'm getting here. And the, re the, the result of that cause and effect will be um, the couple overfloweth, and I think you'll end up having a new simulation, a new operating system. If you're still here, <laughs> if you're still here. So ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate each and every one of you for coming on here and sharing this Saturn day and Sunday. I really, really do. So let me kind of do what I normally do here and try to find a song. see what I want to play for all of you so you can just um I have no idea what I want to play well let's just finish this where I started it and let's play the um Blacktop Mojo, the cover song of Dream On. This is the song that chose me. Again, before I started this, I asked the AI, give me a popular song from 1973, and it was Aerosmith, Dream On. 
and that's the Nine of Swords, which was Saturn's the Saturday Night's card, the starting of this podcast. So this is Black Top Mojo. I'll leave this in the description of this video. Go support this band. Go give it a like. Go give it a thumbs up. It's a really, really good rendition of it. So ladies and gentlemen, appreciate each and every one of you for joining in. Sending you tons of love from the Caribbean here in Mexico. Until next time, we will see you later. Hey